morning of Bible class. And how's everybody feeling this morning? Fine? I hope. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We kind of, this was kind of a short notice that we had of saying that we'd be here this morning because of, I uh, didn't have the, uh, my itinerary made up yet of just when it would be leaving. And, uh, this, uh, being now that it's made up for the next six months, well then, I thought we'd better have the service this morning because it'll be some time before I ever get back again, as far as I know. Maybe this fall. And um, uh, we'll be leaving now this coming week for uh, over at Beaumont, Texas, where we begin down there next week and go through about a eight or ten days meeting there with the... Um, uh, association of the the independents and in different churches. It's really sponsored by the uh, Jesus Name churches down in Beaumont, Texas, where we had the great meeting some time ago, just right after this picture was taken. And uh, they, I know they run. A uh, coach over there with I'll be 27 coach or a train with 27 coaches on it coming over to the meeting at Beaumont. There's where the mayor of the town had a parade and went through the streets and all of them had a great time at Beaumont and we're returning back uh, this next week and then was anticipating San Antonio but won't have enough time for it less on the return and we go from there to Phoenix, Los Angeles down to. Long Beach, and and we come back, Lord willing, go back to the East Coast, back up into Virginia and South Carolina, come back then to Bloomington, Illinois, and from there to the Lane Tech High School last week in April, Christian businessman, and then I leave from there to go to Northern British Columbia, up towards Alaska, and be in there until June, and then... We are hoping to have a great time. Praying then that the investigation uh, that I've been under for a while by uh, income tax concerning the church here will be over by that time, and then we'll I'll be able to go overseas then if it is right in June, which will make it just right for Africa, for June, July, and August in, in Africa. So I certainly need your prayers. <laughs> and we're... Looking for the coming of the Lord, all these things are if it be the will of the Lord. See, Amen. We do not know he could these are not exactly leadings. We just got all the invitations together and prayed over it and asked the Lord which way should we go and and seem like then I don't leave it all up to my own self. I'll let others think about it. Pray over it. And then seem like it, we all seem to feel led to go westward, south and west at this time. So then we had invitations all around, so we just started right down, and first place fell on my heart was either uh, Beaumont or San Antonio. So we looked up, and we had invitations in both places. And the um, we called one in Beaumont, and then they had 42 churches in cooperation of the United Pentecostals and so forth. We thought with a big auditorium, be better to give them about ten days instead of giving five and five to each place. I think if you centralize it like that, it's better. And there's a lot of uh, needy people around in Beaumont and down through that far part of Texas there, and so we're expecting a great time in yeah. Beaumont. And now we never try to go where these big centers and big places. But we try to go as the Lord will lead us to go, no matter how little or how big, just so the Lord is leading. Now, at any time, He could give us a Macedonian call, and we'd leave the field at any time for whatever He'd call us to do, anywhere. And we sure have enjoyed this time of fellowship around the Word of God with you fine people. I trust that you'll be faithful now and come to church and obey the teachings of the Bible to our gallant brother here, Brother Neville, which I highly recommend as a servant of the Lord God. And moving on deeper and deeper with God. And I'm so happy for that. In the little church, I admonish you in the name of the Lord Jesus to grow in the grace of God 
hold yourself steady and look towards Calvary all the time. Amen. Taking all the roots of bitterness out of your heart and soul that God might use you at any time. If you ever feel to do something or a revelation or something comes to you strangely, something warningly or something, be careful. Satan is as sly and slick as he can be. See? Put it with the Word of God and consult your pastor. See? And if you find gifts and so forth creeping up in the church and the operation of these gifts, before you let it go to operating and think, first, feel it pressing on your heart. Now the enemy is real slick. See? And that's just what tears the churches to pieces every time. It is a true gift operated wrong. See? Something God's trying to do and operated wrong. It'll just, it'll just simply not only hurt you, but it'll tear the whole church up. See? Yeah. Consult it. Take it through and through the Bible. Then test it and see if it's God or not. Just keep yeah. testing it and trying. See if it's perfect right down the line and right with the Word. Then you're all right. See, as long as the Word has said it would be here, would operate this certain way, stay right with it. Don't never get off, no matter what anybody does, how real it seems to be, if it doesn't reflect in the Scriptures from Genesis to Revelations, leave it alone. Amen. Don't take no chances. We're in the last days when no. Satan is just deceiving as he can be. Forgive me if I try to take the place of a boss. I'm no boss. But I feel to you like Paul said back there about his congregation once, you're the stars in my crown. Amen. When I cross over the land over on the other side down and meet you in that glorified condition, I want you to stand there to shine like a star. Amen. And I, I want you to be there. I want to be there. And I remember my vision when I seen the presence of the Lord or His people in that glorious land. Yonder. I looked around and I told them, and they told me He would judge me first by the gospel that I preached. I said, just exactly the way Paul preached it. And then millions of people screamed out, we're resting on that. See? Now, I want it to be so. And we are going to meet there someday. Amen. And God never sent Brother Neville and I to be bosses. Not at all. Oh, we're just your brothers, you see. Instructors oh, in the gospel. So let's all work together. And sometimes if, if something operating has to be called or, or said something about it, call down or something on that order. And the person that's got that gift rejects it, just remember refuses it, remember the gift wasn't right. It wasn't God in the first place. The Spirit of God always is ready for correction. Sweet and humble. Amen. And see, if it stands up and say, I'll do it anyhow, you know how sometimes. Just remember, arrogant spirits are not of God. See? Amen. So why take a substitute when everything, the whole earth is filled with the glory Amen. of God. You see, real power of God. Why will we take a substitute? Amen. We're too late in the day now, but remember, the Bible said he'd come in like a, just as sly as he could be and deceive the very elected, if possible. See? And now sometimes we think we are the elected, and I hope we are. But let's just stay right straight with the Bible. And then if everything is right with the Scripture and ordering the Scripture, bringing glory to God and the honor of the church, and so forth, then we know that it is of God because the Bible backs it up. But just our theory won't back it up. It won't do no good. It falls through. So then if something has struck us, no matter how real it seems, if it's not right, not scriptural, get rid of it right now. There's a real one waiting, you see. So pray now and always, and whatever you do, pray for me. Pray for me because we're now striking the fields for the last time, in my opinion. We're now going and remember great things are taking place it's unknown amongst the world jesus come lived died and sacrificed went back to glory and millions never even know nothing about it See? Yeah. it's not flowerly great big it's he came to his own see and the he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches not to the outside to the church Amen. It's the church that gets it shaking. I used to think different from that till one day he spoke to me. Had me go back in the Word and think of how that the prophets all spoke of when John came said the high places would be made low and the low places made high and 
how the power of God would work in the, the, all the mountains would skip like little rams and the leaves would clap their hands. Well, that looked like it's something really was going to take place. See? And when it did, what happened? An old fella come out of the wilderness, probably beard growing all out, and an old piece of sheepskin wrapped around him. There was no conveniences out there in the wilderness. He'd been there since he's nine years old and he's 30 then. Come walking out of the wilderness, stomping out, preaching repentance, standing mud to his knees, probably on the banks of the Jordan. That's when the high places is made low, hey, and the low places is made high. See, it's, you have to have spiritual understanding. Remember, God never did and never will on this earth dwell in glamour. He's against it. He'll never, the great messages will never be make great big so and so and so and and don't do that way. His servants don't work in that manner. His glamour and glory is of above. Amen. Yesterday or two days ago, going out to Kentucky, up in Kentucky with my good friend, Brother Banks Woods, there was a woman policeman standing out there, and he said, Boy, we better slow down. He said, She's rough. And I said, Yeah, that's right. I said, when a nation gets to a place where millions are employed and they have to take women, make policemen, and send them out there and cab drivers and things like that, it's one of the great stains on our nation. She's got just about as much business out there as a, as a rabbit's got in a kettle of grease. It just, it just, just is not her place. And I said, that used to bother me so bad, but now I begin to remember why, no wonder... This is, this is not our kingdom. We are not of this world. They, you, why don't women, our women, wear their, uh, their hair shortened, makeups and rock and rolls and all this stuff? Well, people go to ordinary churches and things and think, that's all right. Why? They're, they are Americans. They are Americans. Got American spirit. We're not Americans. We're Christians. We live, our spirit is of another kingdom. If our spirit was of this kingdom, then we would worship with these things and we'd worship all these vulgar songs and worship all this rock and roll. Wherever your heart is, there your treasures is. And our treasures is above. Amen. So therefore, we're going to a kingdom. This is not our home. We're just sojourning here, trying to bring other citizens out of the darkness and go into a city and maybe hold a citywide campaign just plow away for a week or ten days for one precious soul out there. One. Amen. Just one sitting out there. You might say, the meeting was a great success. Five thousand came to the altar. It might not be one of them saved. Not a one of them. See? And there might be, you might think, only two people came to the altar, but one of them might be a jewel. We just seen it in the creek. God picks out the fish. He knows which is fish and which is not. Amen. So, see, we're just preaching. And remember, you're doing the same thing in this tabernacle. But remember always this. My sheep know my voice. And the voice of God is His Word. I was thinking the other day how these people said that there never was a certain denomination of churches saying divine healing wasn't right. Never was nobody given a gift of divine healing, but St. Paul or the apostles, the twelve in the upper room, has given the gift of divine healing. And that was all. That settled it. But you see through this wonderful chart that Brother Willie over here so marvelously fixed up for us, that little thread has been through the churches all the way. I wonder what that same denomination says about the history of the church, about Irenaeus. About St. Martin. And all those martyrs down through the age for hundreds of years at the death of the apostles spoke in tongues and healed the sick and raised the dead and performed miracles the whole church. Amen. wonder what about them? It was only to the apostles. See how narrow it is? They don't have spiritual understanding. That's all. Think. Blind, dead, and sin and trespasses. Sin means unbelief. Anything in unbelief is sin. If a fellow got a, a title that long, of DD, double L, PhD, LLD, and says there's no such a thing as divine healing or baptism of the Holy Ghost, a man's dead in sin. 
He might be able to explain all kinds of mysteries in the Bible, but his very life, his testimony proves that he's dead. He's dead in sin and trespasses because he's a sinner. Sin is unbelief. Anybody else? Sin isn't committing adultery and smoking cigarettes and dancing and carrying on like that. That isn't sin. That's the attributes of unbelief. But a, a believer, no matter if a man don't drink, don't smoke, don't do these things, never said a bad word, keeps all the Ten Commandments, he can still be a black sinner. See? Just as rank as he can be. If he denies anything of the power of God, he's a sinner. The word sin is unbelief. I use fine see if that's right or not. An unbeliever in the Word of God, he is a sinner. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, all I thought then this morning, taking it upon myself by the will of the Lord, by the commandment of the Holy Spirit, to come down to the tabernacle again and maybe keep you all two or three hours. But I want to finish the book of the fourth chapter of Revelations before I go. Amen. And now I hope it's not wearisome to you. I hope it's, oh. it's glory oh. to you. I hope it's something that will do you good and help you in the days ahead to come. And now maybe I told Billy to come down here this morning and to give out prayer cards if there was any strangers in our midst. Because uh, we'll be leaving, and now I don't know when we'll be back. God only knows that. And I wanted to talk maybe the last meeting if in, when He called me up then about uh, about nine o'clock and said, "Dad, there's some people there to be prayed for." I've asked them, but said it's people that uh, people that comes to church all the time. I said, "Then don't give out any prayer cards." See, I said because that's people that we have prayer for the sixth morning. We're calling people up and pray for them. I said, if it, uh, it's people that comes to Tabernacle that we know, I want some stranger. And he said, then he come out there a few minutes ago when he met me, standing out there, said, well, I gave out some prayer cards. said, just a few in there. I gave prayer cards out. said, you can do whatever you want to. I said, well, we'll see how the message gets along, see where we're at, and then we'll go. I, he said, well, many of the people that wanted prayer cards, of course, they said they were people that's there in the church, see, well, we know that God is God, and my, just the things that He does. Why, they, the phone rings all the time of people of different things, just little bitty things sometimes, and how God answers prayer. Amen. I wonder if that little lady or her husband, she from down in New Albany, they brought that little choked-out baby the other night with pneumonia in my house about 12, 1 o'clock. Uh, uh, fine. How is the baby? Fine. Good. All right, just let me show you. See, it's something that you wouldn't know. It don't go on when the Holy Spirit speaks. Fred Softman, our precious brother Fred. I heard him say amen a while ago, but I couldn't place him out. Where is he at? Is he here? Here, right here. Brother Fred Softman, let me show you how simple it is. He had some friends coming, which is Brother Welch Evans, I presume. I don't know. They had a trailer there that locked the doors, and Fred lost the keys and been looking everywhere and couldn't find them anywhere. And Brother Welch is coming right on up. So the day come that he was to arrive and things, he couldn't find the key anywhere, so he just called up home. So said, Brother Bram, where is the keys at? Where would we find them? Now that might stump some of you for a man to ask a question like that, but wait just a minute. Remember the sons of Jesse looking for the mules? Yeah. So if I had a gift in my hand, I'd take it down and ask, give it to the prophet. And maybe he'd tell us where those mules were. Remember that? And while he's walking on the street, they met the prophet. He said, you're looking for them mules. Said, there you go on back home. He <laughs> said, they've already returned. Is that right? I prayed. Fred walked over and picked up the keys. Amen. That's it. See? Brother Ed Dalton, where you at? Where's Ed Dalton? I know he's here somewhere. I seen him a while ago. Oh, back in there he is. He heard me through the income or the public address system. The other night a call came in and Brother Ed was in serious trouble. I wanted to help him. Nope. Said I just want you to ask God. I asked the Lord to help him and next day his wife called up. Somebody come to the rescue. All right. Is that right, Brother Ed? See? 
He's just God, that's all. He's just God. See, he's just, it's just all the time, constantly from one place to another. One place to another. No matter what trouble it is, he's God. We don't go around and brag about those things. We're not supposed to. Just don't let the right hand or the left hand know what the right hand's doing. We talk it among ourselves, but we don't blast that out somewhere because that's self-pride. Like God only could do it for one person. He'd do it for anybody. It'll believe Him. It's belief, faith, whatever. Whatever you want to do, whatever your thoughts are, take it to God. He, 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 he provides everything. Isn't that right? So He answers prayer. He's a, God is a prayer-answering Father. Amen. Now, so therefore, in I thought closing in this last meetings and so forth as we were as we were doing, we would we would have maybe some of the discernment at the last of the meeting, if the Lord's willing, and maybe during the time of the meeting, we just don't know what He's going to do. I like Amen. it that way. Don't set no certain things. Just Lord. let Him do as He wants to do. Amen. Now, get the fourth chapter of the book of Revelations and stop the clock. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Yes, brother. Certainly I believe that. Amen. Absolutely believe that. Here, Brother Welch Evans, I think that's him sitting right back there. Let me, while we're turning to Revelation 4, you're not all go. You all heard and read in the papers about this band in Louisville that steals these cars, takes them down to Kentucky somewhere real quick. And in Kentucky, you don't even have to have a title. They'll make you one in Kentucky. So you just only thing have to just take it away and sell it. So they'll take these cars and run them in and repaint them again and bring those cars out and sell them. All you have to have is your number, your block, and they'll make you a title. So they just take a car off the street and get it off real quick and run into some shop somewhere. Just change the whole thing over altogether, see? And, um, and uh, repaint it and everything, take it out and sell it. There's a racket of it, in especially all over the United States, and a great, great of it's in Kentucky. I read an article in the paper here not long ago about it. Well, big, good-hearted, precious brother Evans and his family driving all the way from Macon, Georgia up here every Sunday to hear the gospel. Oh, how loyal and what real friends. Then he goes over to Miller's Cafeteria where I'm not plugging for Miller's, but I certainly think that they got the best food in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, anyhow. As far as, I ain't mean you private homes that I've eaten over there now. I mean for, you know, outside. And um, I eat over there too. I can feed my family there cheaper than I can feed them at home. That's right. So then I uh, go in over there, and so Brother Evans, he goes in, and he gets him something to eat and parks his car out there. When he comes out with all his clothes and family and all of them, he didn't have no car or nothing. It was all gone. Well, poor fellow, Brother Evans is a man like all of us. He has a little business down there. He works on cars, buys wrecks and fixes them up. He's a poor man and spends his money coming up here because he believes in this type of gospel. I'm praying that God will send him a messenger down there somewhere uh, to help him down in that country. Now, Brother Evans come up. So he didn't know what to do. He had notified police. They couldn't find it. So he come over home. He and Brother Fred and them, we sat in the room and talked about it. I said, now, that's the way we do. We sit in the room, find out what takes place, and then we go to God. So when we asked the Lord to turn the man that had the car, turn him around and send him back, wherever he was. Usually they'd run him down around Bowling Green or somewhere, get him right out of the hot spot here, you see, so they could totally get him repainted and fixed up. This is a nice car. I think station wagon. Was that right, Brother Evans? Is a, a station wagon. So, um, and so what happened? We got out and prayed. And, Lord, give us witness. It's all all right. Everything fine. So then the power of the Lord came in with us. Brother Evans goes out and starts out, led to go down a certain way and come back. Right here in Jeffersonville, the car stole a little over here, said his car sitting there with just about enough gas need to take it all out of it to take it down to about pretty near Bowling Green and come back. They got out of the car, stopped the car, left the key in it, just walked away and left it sitting there. Right here in Jeffersonville, where he could find it, not Louisville, over here in Jeff, brought it all the way back. You know, 
Lord can make birds obey him. He can make man obey him. He can make his enemy obey him. He can, yes, sir, he's God. You ever said his car not one thing gone? Just about a half a tank of gasoline where it almost got to Bowling Green. The Holy Spirit must have said, turn around, get on back there and take that car to Jeffersonville. Set it right here on the street and park it right here because I'm going to send him right around this way and up this way to find it. Is that right, Brother Ed Welch? That's right. Amen. He's God. He answers prayer, Brother Roy. He just, that's, uh, Brother Slaughter, that's just the same thing. He heals your little doggy. And I know that he heals, he answers prayer, he still performs miracles, he's still God, he always was God, he always will be God. He, Amen. He's God on the housetop, what is that brother saying, church, church, God in the kitchen. Amen. God out on the farm, God in the automobile, he's God everywhere, he's God all, all through and through God. Amen. Oh, how wonderful, we get to preaching, that's why I'm never getting Amen. to this lesson. All right. Let's bow our heads just a moment for prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are so fond of your Holy Word till our hearts just burn within us when we know that your Spirit comes down in the midst of us and there speaks to us and our hearts reach out and take a hold of it and we just seem to feel so good over it, Lord. And to know that in this dark hour where there's so much confusion, like the prophet said, in the last days there would come a famine, something to this order, not for bread and for water, but for the hearing of the true word of God. And man would travel from east to the west, north and south, seeking to find the true word of God. Word. What is the Word? Jesus is the Word. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us to see the manifestation of the real Word of God made manifest according to the Scriptures and brought to pass that how people would travel and seek and would fail to find it. Oh, God, we are so glad, so glad that we found him years ago, precious to our heart. And to see that we're not one bit confused. Oh, God, you said, They that know their God shall do exploits in that day. And here we are in the last days, seeing all the things that Jesus said would come to pass, being made manifest right among us. Very signs, wonders, miracles performed, doing it just the way he did it, as he said, as it was in the days of Sodom. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. And Lord, you let us, by the Holy Spirit, reach out in that Word and get those real things and tie them into Calvary by the Word and see that in Him we have the fullness and the riches and the blessings and the glory and it all goes to Him who is worthy that come tuck the book out of the right hand of Him that sat upon the throne and set out on it Himself. For He was slain since the foundation of the world. We speak of Him this morning, Father, and we pray that You'll bless our hearts. Let His Spirit move among us and bless us and enrich in our experience and heal the sickness in our midst and Give us overcoming grace. God, as I go out there in the field to face the foe, may I realize that I'm garrisoned every hour by prayer. Oh, how I depend on that garrison, the enemy approaching. But know that the garrison holds because mothers and fathers and boys and girls Christians born again with the experience, heaven-bound people is on their knees praying, O oh God, give deliverance. And Father, we pray that you'll let us get out into the enemy's lines like you are, conquer every precious soul that's waiting. Do, Lord, bring them out of darkness into light, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in the fourth chapter of the book of Revelations, we ended up the third chapter, and let us kind of be reverently, and I'll try not to keep you too long, but 
In this third chapter, the church went up as a type. When John was taken up, the church went up. And from that time on, it's dealing with Israel until the coming again. Don't you see how it is? The people today, how they're great, something's going to shake the whole world and everything. That's unscriptural. No, sir. The next thing in order is the going of the church. Reading the church ages, you see what? How these other things that's to take place is during the time of the wedding ceremony when the church is in glory. God returns back with great wonders to perform, international uh, miracles and things by the Jews. Don't go to the church at all. On the third chapter ends up the church age. Right? And the church age goes out with such a little bitty minority that we find... Just listen here. I, I read this again this morning. It just nearly tore me to pieces. The place and the attitude of Christ at the end of the church age found from the 21st to 22nd verse of Revelation 3. Think of it. Christ at the end where he's at. Where is it at the end of the church age? Outside his church. Pushed out by denominations and creeds. What's his attitude trying to get back in? That's a pitiful condition. Then we find out here after these things, you heard of voices speaking to him. How oh, was it? The Spirit left the earth. After these things starts out the first chapter, uh, of the first verse. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Revelations 4.1 After the church is gone, then a, a door was opened, and we went through all that and found that that was Christ was the door, and the same voice that was walking in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks also was the same voice he heard in heaven saying, Come up hither. John went up. That represented the church going in the rapture. John went up in the Spirit. It was tucked away into heaven and foresaw all the things that God promised and said to the disciples, What is it to you if he tarries till I come? He saw the coming of the Lord and what would take place. He saw on earth what would take place on earth to the rapture of the church that's taken up and showed plumb on down even to a past millennium. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Amen. Now, we left him last Sunday on the fourth chapter and the fourth verse. And around about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now we found out that these were elders. An elder is never applied to an angel or any being. It is a redeemed human being. Elders cause the thrones, crowns, dominion is never referred to to angels. But the the crowns and thrones so forth pertain to human beings. And these elders were crowned and clothed and setting on thrones. And we found them over other parts of the Scripture that they were uh, the twelve apostles. And they were the twelve patriarchs. Twenty and four of them, which means twenty-four. Twelve apostles, twelve patriarchs. And we found even the city that descends from God out of heaven after the earth is exploded and all gone to pieces and nothing left on the earth but volcanic ashes. That's all will be left. There'll be no more sea. The sea will dry up. I was speaking last night to someone or yesterday and somewhere. Um, the earth once stood up like this right around the sun. Equal heat all the way up and down. Up in British ice fields, you can blast down there 500 feet and find palms. It comes suddenly, frozen like uh, refrigeration now, like you're uh, dehydrating and so forth, and you're freezing, deep freezes, and keep strawberries and things for years and years and years to come, see? 
That's the same way it was in that time. Quickly there come an antediluvian destruction and flooded the whole earth over. And when it did, uh, atomic powers rocked it out of its orbits and it froze over and there she lay. Dig down and confine them up around the Arctic zones and they, palm trees and so forth. Showed that it was once inhabited beautifully. Set up and now it, it shook back. Now where I think God got that water, when the Genesis starts, Genesis 1, the earth was without form and void and water was up on the deep. And the Spirit of God moved up on the water and said, Let there be life. God separated then the land and the water which made the earth. But the whole earth was covered over. Now what He did, He just, through the atmospheres, He just, atmosphere is, uh, atmospheres is filled with hydrogen and oxygen and so forth. Then He just lifted it up off the earth and separated it. There was no sea on the earth then. God watered the earth, didn't He come rains? He watered it through springs and things, irrigation. Then when He, only thing He did then, when man bloated out of its orbit out to one side, what happened? It threw it back and the heat down here and the cold up there and hot and cold what accumulates. Feel here on them windows right now. Hot in here, cold outside. See the sweat? And rain is nothing but sweat, respiration. And water is ashes. And so then when it, I like that song, you laid your hand, precious Lord, on the prairies. Laid your wonderful hand on the range. Lord, you poured forth the fountain, raised up the mountain. Oh, Lord, keep your precious hand on me. You made the clouds, formed the clouds that made the rain. From the rain made the sea. From the sea brought the clouds that give us life abundantly. You hold the earth and the skies in your command, Lord. Oh, please keep your precious hand on me. Oh, how great, yes. The God of heaven. Then in this great time, it's leaning back like this now, and He made us a promise, no more water but fire this time. Instead of throwing, they throw the earth away from the sun. Of course, it got cold. If you throw it into the sun, it'll burn. And just as he destroyed it with water, put the bow in the sky, wouldn't do it no more. Now he give a promise, he'd burn it. So there you come, we're sin and all glamour and all filth. And not long ago, I was riding down through the prairies, a little boy. I used to think get my history books and geographies and think of the great western plains. Someday I said I'll live there peacefully and quiet where there's no sin and I'll roam the fields and I'll hunt like the Indian. And I'll, I'll live there a peaceful life all the days of my life. But now it's white man's been there. Where white man goes, sin is with him. He is the biggest murderer and killer of all the people on the earth is a white man. He's a renegade of all colors. Here not long ago in the paper, uh, Brother Tom, here from Africa, um, I seen a piece in the paper two weeks ago, I believe it was, and he said, they said, if the Americans are still permitted to go to Africa in ten years from now, the great African line will be completely distinct. The elephants, the renegades, shoot just anywhere he can, picture of two big males trying to hold a wounded male up look like tears running from her eyes they didn't want the males didn't want the female to die and each one holding by her side like his keeper from falling down to her to the ground just shot to pieces a guy to shoot anything like that don't deserve to have a gun in his hand That's right you ain't got gumption enough to handle it now, a couple of years ago trying to run some herd uh, elk into my good friend brother Roy Roberson them back there what a guiding up in Colorado no, we had a nice herd. Jeff and I'd had him up there for years and years, about 80 head of elk in a herd. They let some of these uh, office guys out of Denver come out there, these blouse pants on, lace leg dams hunters. Mm. Here they come up there, bunch of jeeps and things like that. Got back in our territory there, and I was driving these elk across the mountain behind them about a mile or two, and this herding along. You have to keep them thinned out, the big old bulls and things. So don't you break your herd up, You're just like raising cattle or anything. Wildlife should be the same to us. It's not a target. You want to shoot targets. they got range out here to shoot them on. 
Rod said, disgrace to butcher up things like that. It's sinful. It's ungodly. And I counted 123 shots out of machine guns like Farney from the shoulders. And the next morning, Brother Banks Woods here with me went up on a mountain. I counted 19 bloody beds. Didn't know nothing about hunting. You shoot a big animal like that, you might hit him deep enough to kill him. They just turn with bang, 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 shoot one, then the other. Why, they'll die. Why, if the fever sets in them, you could find them, they're no good. They spoil right away, and the scavengers, coyotes and things, eat them up. Nineteen bloody beds, big bulls, hoofs that big around, and blood spurting out two feet where it had been punctured like that with them guns. They ought to allow a renegade like that to have a gun in his hand. That's right. He ain't got the gumption to handle a gun. Oh, it's tremendous sinful to do like that. That's awful. But that's the American. Canada, you precious people from Canada, if America keeps going on, Canada will be as low down as America after a while. Get around the borders of Canada anywhere and you got that American atmosphere. This America is a prostitute of the nations. That's exactly what she is. And she's going to be worse than ever now. She's coming to her end. The Bible speaks of her doom. Tells how she's going to be. America, low down, rotten, filthy, no good. That's exactly right. She's been a great nation. She's carried a gospel message. What makes her the way she is? Because she's turned down the gospel message. Rejected the truth. She's horrible. She's got it coming. Don't worry. I've seen it in the vision. And it's thus saith the Lord. It's coming. She's going to pay for her sins. Back when America was America. She was a great nation, the greatest the world's ever known since Israel was America. But she sure has polluted herself now. She's rejected the message. She's took nothing but just... Now she's got herself... You see where she's at now. Everybody knows that in the last election. Shows where her spiritual standing is. She doesn't know. Now these elders setting up on the throne with these crowns. Now the fifth verse we're going to start... And out of the throne proceeded lightnings, thunders, voices, and there was seven lamps on fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Oh, I love this, don't you? Oh, I just feel like my coat fits me, you know. Just funny. Oh, I mean it, a spiritual coat, of course, you know. All right. Out of the throne, let's speak of this throne now for a few minutes. This was not a throne of mercy. Amen. Mercy's throne is finished. No more mercy. It's without mercy. How are we going, how the judgment seat going to be the judgment seat of Christ? The judgment seat, the white throne judgment. Is there going to be mercy then? There is not one stretch of mercy to be given. At the judgment throne, you could scream mercy till you couldn't scream no more. And you just might as well scream out in the air somewhere because there's no more mercy. Now is the day of mercy. Now, let's go back in the Old Testament here just a little bit and find out what mercy is. Go back and see what happened to this throne. This throne, of course, is the, the judgment seat. And be, the reason today that there is Mercy is because the mercy seat is sprinkled with an atonement, blood. And as long as blood is on the judgment seat, then it is not judgment no more. It's mercy because something died to stay judgment. Amen. If you see it, say amen. amen. As long as blood is on the mercy seat, show that something died the whole judgment back. But when the church is raptured, the mercy seat becomes a judgment seat. Over in the, old, in the New Testament here too. And the sanctuary, that's where the, the jury in the sanctuary, the judge on the seat in the sanctuary. Now, that judgment seat and the sanctuary become full of smoke. What was it? Like Mount Sinai. Judgment. Mercy had left the throne of God. God will judge the world without mercy. How many know that? Amen. 
Only one thing you'll recognize in that day. What is it? Blood. That's the only thing that appeased an angry God. Adam and Eve made just as good an apron as any Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, or Pentecostal could make. It covered their nakedness, but God could see through it, so He killed something and tucked the dead skins of the uh, skins of the dead animal and covered it. Blood had to take its place. That stayed His wrath. He seen the blood and backed off from it because something had shed its life. Oh God, think of it. Only thing that'll back off God is blood. And there's only one blood that he'll back from, and that's his own son. When he sees that's his own son's blood, he'll back back. Because that's a gift that is God has given to his son to redeem those who he foreknew. And it brings God back from his judgment. But when that blood is removed, then all that was foreknown has been called into the precious body. His church has been made ready and taken up. Then God's wrath is on the people. Oh, brother, don't never want to stand there. Let me stand before a machine gun. Let me be cut to pieces. Let me be sawed inch by inch. Let anything happen. If the oath of the Knights of Columbus let them split open my belly and burn sulfur and Everything else in me, my arms and legs cut off, whatever it may be, but never let me stand to that white throne judgment before God. Oh, let me take this little throne here before the seat of Christ and accept His blood. Amen. Nothing in my arms I bring, Lord. No, no other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. That's all I know about. This is all my hope and stay, nothing but the blood of Jesus. No one ready for it turned down on his songs and he's a Christian, a staunch Christian that didn't want to buy his songs. One day he said, I'll write one. And someday that they'll receive and the people want something more modernistic in the religious song. One day there the Holy Spirit took on me, grabbed the pen and he wrote, All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diademic glory. Lord of Lords. For on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other grounds is sinking sand. All other grounds is sinking sand. Where it's church, where it's friend, where it's foe, where it's nation, where it's riches, where it's poverty, where it's good or whatever it is, all other grounds is sinking sand. That's the only thing it'll finally go away. But Christ that solid rock I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. Bear that in mind. Notice, let's go over to Leviticus 16 and read in the back way, back in the back of the Bible now, the Levitical laws and see over here of Leviticus, Leviticus the 16th chapter and begin with the 14th verse of the 16th chapter. Oh, I, I love to take my time on these things. Bring them out. Leviticus, 14, uh, Leviticus 16, 14. And he shall take out the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger up on the mercy seat. Up on the mercy seat. Watch. We're going to get into this after a while. Eastward. Don't forget that word. Eastward. Where is Jesus coming from? The east in a cloud of glory. Where does the S U N rise? East. Where will the S O N rise? East. Where was the mercy seat setting? Towards the east. Why have I got you all setting this away? Towards the east. Why the altar is to the east. We'll see that while I beautifully. I'm going to draw it out. I asked as many as I could to bring papers and so forth to get these maps in a few minutes. All right, sprinkle it eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. Oh, isn't that beautiful? 
seven times towards the east. What is it? The seven church ages shall be covered by the blood. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ's blood just as sufficient as yesterday, today, and forever. And to every age to save every sinner, heal every sick person, bring every miracle, every sign to pass. Seven times way back yonder in the Old Testament, 1490 years before Christ comes. Think of it. Symbol. Seven times shall, then shall he kill the goat, the sin offering that is for the people, and bring his blood with the in the veil to do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because the of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their trespasses in all their sins. And so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them that is in the midst of their uncleanliness. What was it? The mercy seat. Where the now? And there inside of the ark was the what? The law. And the law to trespass one commandment was to die without mercy. Amen. But be that you could have mercy... The blood had to lay on the altar. They sprinkled the mercy seat, and the mercy seat is the altar where you kneel and ask for mercy. God forbid it we ever take it from our churches. The old-fashioned altar where man can kneel and call on God for mercy. And mercy is rich and flowing free from the blood of the Lord Jesus now, also, that's the mercy, that's mercy seat. But you notice in here, it was not mercy seat. For there was lightnings and thunder and voices. There's no lightning and thunders at mercy. That's judgment. Let's turn to Exodus 19, chapter of Exodus and the 16th verse. Exodus 19, chapter of Exodus. And let's begin with the 16th verse. And it came to pass, listen, what the, when God ascended up on Mount Sinai, and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders, lightning, and a thick cloud upon the mountain, and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud. What is the voice of the trumpet? The archangel. So that all the people, listen, all the people was in the camp trembled. Judgment! Then marched out there and God had given them grace to travel by but they had demanded a law. They, God wanted to be in a denomination. They wanted to make a denomination out of something they could argue about. Instead of just following God and living under His jurisdiction, under His power, grace had provided a prophet. Grace had provided an atonement, a lamb. Grace had provided all these things. And yet they wanted judgment. They wanted something they could do. God said, send them together. I'll let them know what it is. I'll show them what it is. Read, listen. And the voice of the trumpet got louder and louder until it shut the earth. You see what judgment is. I don't want that. Give me mercy. And the, yes, that was uh, Exodus, the, uh, the, the 19th chapter and the 16th verse, Brother Fred. Exodus 19, 16. Now, notice the 17th verse. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God. Oh, my. I want to meet Him in peace. Not like that. 
And they stood at the inner part of the mountain. Way back. Remember that mountain had lines drawn around it? Even if a cow touched that mountain, it had to die right there. She ain't coming to the presence of God. And God and Moses brought forth the people. Now, the 18th verse, the next verse. And Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke. Because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Just smoking and burning like a furnace. What did He send? Not in His Shekinah glory, but in the wrath of His judgments. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mountain quaked greatly. Brother, I don't want to be there. And when the voice of the trumpet sound long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by a voice. Moses spoke, not the people. They were shaking to pieces. And the, and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down and charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. People sat in the back of the church, right at somebody speaking with tongues or dancing in the Spirit. Gone! Blaspheme the Holy Ghost, sealed forever. Whosoever speaks the word against the Holy Ghost will never be forgiven in this world, neither in the world to come. Don't gaze upon it. Stay away from it or either accept it. We better leave that scripture. <laughs> Read it on, the rest of it. See what God said and the people said, Oh, Moses, you speak. Don't let God speak anymore. Amen. We wish now we hadn't asked for this. See? Let you speak to us, Moses. God speaks, we'll all die. Amen. See, God had made an atonement. Now, the voice of the throne. Notice in this throne, before the throne was the seven stars. The voice of the stars, voices, you see. There was more in the Revelations 4 here, or 5. We find out, and out of the throne proceeded lightning, thunders, and voices. Not one voice. Voices, plural. What was it? God! Amen. Speaking to the church! Amen. Reflecting Himself to the seven spirits. Amen. When the true anointed of God speaks, it's the voice of God. Amen. To reject it is to remove the candlestick. Amen. Voices, the voice of the seven church ages. Over here in the corner... The voices speaking with thunder and lightning. Nowadays they're so, well, we don't believe in saying hell in the pulpit. Oh, mercy. So, oh, we need man of God. Man who won't hold back. Now, everybody can't be a preacher. But you got a voice. If you can't preach the people a sermon, if you're a preacher... You're called to the pulpit to preach. If you're not, you're still a preacher. But live the people a sermon. Amen. Let your sermon be lived and it's the voice of God that will bring reproach Amen. to them who reject it. They say no one can put a finger on his or her life. They're sweet, living. If there ever was a man of God, it's that man or that woman. See? Live your sermons. Don't try to preach them. If you're not called to be a preacher, you get all mixed up anyhow and messed up and you'll get people tangled up. You won't, well, you, you'll ruin them and yourself too. Amen. Just live your sermon. Amen. The preacher is called to preach his and to live it too. Amen. If you can't live it, then you stop preaching. Amen. But you're supposed to live your sermons. All right, here was voices. Oh, how we need in Jeffersonville thousands of lived voices, the thunder of God thundering out in sweetness and holiness. 
impurity, undefiled lives, walking around in the earth today without a blemish. Yes, they're real Christians. That's thunder against the enemy. The devil don't care how loud you can holler. The devil don't care how much you can jump, how much you can do this or shout. Well, what hurts the devil is to see that sanctified, holy life, consecrated to God. Say anything to him, call him anything, just as sweet as it can be, move right on. Oh, my. That throws him away. That's the thunder that shakes the devil. Just like, well, you say, if he could preach like a Billy Graham or an old Roberts or somebody, a great influential speaker, it'd be, oh, no, sometimes the devil just laughs at that. <laughs> he don't pay no more attention to that than nothing. You get all the theology, theology you wanted to and all the seminary training, and the devil just sat back and laughed at it. But when he sees that life, look at those disciples down to that maniac child that day with epilepsy. Said, come out of him, devil, come out of him, devil, come out of him, devil. The devil sitting there said, Now aren't you making a pretty shame of yourself? Amen. Now you see what you're doing? Jesus told you you commissioned you to go cast me out. Not a one of you can do it. But brother, when they seen come one come walking quietly. <laughs> oh my <laughs> He didn't have to say nothing. That devil was already scared right then. He knew he had to leave. <laughs> Oh, there come a life. Not only a sermon, but a life. He said, come out of him. <laughs> oh, my. That done it! Yeah, my. Quietly, he knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was doing. Now, voices, the voices of the seven trumpets, or voices of the seven uh, uh, stars, seven messengers. But I watch here. And... Seven lamps before of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Seven lamps. Let's draw a little bit here. The throne. The holy place. The congregation. Right here was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven stars, seven lamps, seven messengers, seven spirits. Not all together means gods and seven spirits, but seven manifestations of the same Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? Here at the throne, shining out in each church age. This church age is reflecting back this way. The voices of God, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. See? Seven, there was voices and seven lights on fire. Amen. Seven spirits, which are the seven spirits of God. Remember a couple Sundays ago we got to it, the big diamond? But it's cut. And many different ways to reflect the fire and lights from it. That's the way Jesus Christ is the beginning of the creation of God. Revelations 1. Is that right? Then when was God created? He is the beginning of the creation of God. And God is eternal. Is that right? But when God was created, when a little baby... That was conceived in the womb of a mother, a virgin. And she began to develop these cells within her to bring forth this little baby. That was the beginning of God's creation. For God was made flesh and dwelt among us and become Emmanuel, God with us. The beginning of the creation of God. Then in that great jewel that come from the dust because he was made of dust. Is that right? Amen. Eat food like I do. Eat food like you do. Which dust of the body he become calcium, potash, petroleum, cosmic light. But in him dwell eternal light. Amen. Amen. No wonder the wise man said to the star, guide us to thy perfect light. Amen. They were just reflecting the light of one perfect light. And there he was, a perfect light of God. 
beginning of the creation of God. Now in there, was he? how did he be able to reflect himself back to the stars of the earth as the wise man saw him in heaven and they become ministering spirits here on the earth? He was wounded, the big diamond cut off for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, the chastisement of our peace upon him with his stripes we were healed. What was it doing? Reflecting any man that claims to be a servant of God that denies divine healing and his power. Not getting his light from that diamond. Not getting his light from that stone because it's reflecting him the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. And through the seven Glory. stars and the seven church ages. Amen. Oh, praise be to God. Thank you. Yes, it's appropriate for a minister to worship God from the pulpit with thanksgiving and praise. Amen. 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 Oh, how real, how it thrills my soul. I feel like I could scream and run and jump as high as I could jump. Because there is something within me that's changed me from what I was. I'm not what I ought to be and not what I want to be. But I know I've been changed from what I used to be. Something has happened. Something taken place. And stand here and see this eternal Word that's waved every storm. When they tried to burn the Bibles and everything, it waved right on just the same because it said, Heavens and earth shall pass away, but my Word shall not pass away. Up here near Chicago now, and a Bible lays on a pulpit of a church Way back before the First World War, a missionary, and the fellow was converted, and he wanted to get these missionaries' Bible. Said, "I can't give you this, and my mother would give me this." And said, "When I get home, I'll send you one." He started back across the sea in a German submarine, blew the the ship up, he never found a piece of it. And two years later, way down on the coast, they seen a box float, and some of them thought it might be something had drowned, and so they got the box out and opened it up. Two fellows walking along. And in there, the only thing survived it. There was that Bible that he's sending back to the missionary. It lays on a pulpit here near Chicago today on a Methodist church. Heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Amen. During a time of the flood here in 1937, this little old church on the mud floors and so forth that was in it, we could ride over the top of it here in a, in a rowboat. The floods went up that night when I preached the gospel and left my Bible laying open on the pulpit when I went home, predicting that flood would come. I said, I've seen him measure 22 feet over Spring Street down here. Old Brother Jim Wise, Hart and them laughed at him. You remember that, Brother George? I said, he said, oh, Billy, in 84, it only was about six inches on Spring Street. I said, I've seen a man come down from the sky and take a major stick and stick it there on Spring Street. He said, 22 feet. He said, you're just excited. I said, I'm not excited. It's thus saith the Lord. That's how many feet was over Spring Street. 22 feet to the inch. Exactly. And that old Bible word being preached on that night, she started raining, the floods breaking through and so forth. And this old church, the seats went right straight up to the ceiling. The Bible went right straight up to the ceiling, washing through here with all that water raising up. The pulpit went right straight up. They come right down and every seat set right back in the same place. The Bible laid right back in the same place. And all that water is still opened up the same chapter in the same place. Amen. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen. How that Bible floating that salty water for two years without even soiling the words on it. God's words are true. Amen. Amen. I remember I asked that old brother Jim Wild's heart was so satisfied with that. Every time he'd get a pain on his arm, he got some kind of wrong with him. When he got about 75 years old, he got rheumatism. The pain would go to hurt here. He'd run get the Bible and open up lay it on there. No pain down here. I come up there one day and he had so many Bibles over him, I couldn't see Brother Jim. He just had Bibles all over him. Is that God's promise? That's it. Heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Remember the old fellow used to come by to see me? None of his people here, I don't think. I used to help him a little, you know, along because he was old and needed money. And he'd come down. He said, one day I was leaving for Canada. Turned around, he went out the gate and he said, Billy, my son, 
One of these days you'll come back and old Uncle Jim won't be dragging up and down this road here anymore. That was the last time. <laughs> when I was in Canada, I got a telegram. He died right out there in the arms of Sister Morgan. He had a heart attack and ran out to the hospital. Looked up at her and passed away. Sister Margie, is she here this morning? She usually comes in. You all know one of the great cancer cases where you're in a Baptist hospital. She's been dead for 17 years on the medical uh, 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 clinic over there on the record of dying with a cancer 17 years ago. She lives at 412 Canobolo Avenue, nursing in the hospital out here. Oh, amazing grace, oh, how amen. sweet the sound. Hallelujah. Jim Tom Robinson, an attorney in Louisville, and we all know Jim Tom. That's what brought him to believe in this message. He went up there, and his father's one of the heads of the staff up there at the hospital. He went up and searched it to find out if it was true, if she was died with cancer and was given up and sent home and thought, as far as they know, she's already dead. And his father searched it through, and it's the truth. And Jim Tom said, it's a lie. She's sitting right up here now. I can take you to her. Oh, he's, he's real God, isn't he? I'm so glad he can look over our mistakes, aren't you? Makes us love him with all of our heart. Thrones, lightnings, what? Seven lamps. Our lamps are seven stars called seven spirits, meaning the seven manifestations of the Holy Spirit are the seven church ages, are the seven seats of mercy for the people. Here they are. Seven seats of mercy. Seven seats, seven churches, seven stars, seven manifestations, seven spirits, seven lamps. Oh, my, how God is so perfect. Ever, the, the, the pneumatics of the Bible, pneumatics of the Bible is the most perfect thing there is on earth. You can't get one flaw from Genesis or Revelations in the pneumatics of the Bible. Not another piece of literature written that you can't find a flaw for. You read three verses, but not in the Bible. They've been trying for over 200 years to add one phrase to the Lord's Prayer or take one away from it. It's perfect. Can't add no more or take any more from it. They've been thinking they make the prayer a little bit better. They've tried to comb this into it and put that into it or take this out of it. It just ain't right. <laughs> See, it's perfect. Amen. All of God's ways is perfect. Amen. Therefore, we are imperfect. But he said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. How can we be? Through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. To forget our own selves and just live in him. Amen. There you are. How Precious is it. All right. The sixth verse now, if we get into it. Seven lanes. And before the throne was a sea of glass likened to crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Oh, my. Look at this. Beasts full of eyes. Full of eyes before and behind. Now wait, uh, before the throne was a sea of glass like unto crystal, and in the midst of the throne were four, and around the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Now, the sea of glass, you just go to, uh, this ain't very much of a temple here, but I want to raise this for a minute. Now, Now we want to study here just a little bit. The sea of glass is symbolized in the old temple. For Moses was commanded of God to build the temple on earth like he saw it in the heavens. Everyone knows that. All right. And let me just draw a little bit here now. Say, here was the ark in the Old Testament. All right. The next thing that was called holy of holies, and the next place here was the altar, which was called holy place, and right before here was the sea of brass, it's called. In other words, it was a place for the sacrifice. Sacrifices was washed. Was washed here before they was received off the altar, at the brass altar, the brazing altar, where the sacrifice is burned. Now, we want to watch this now. Where the, where, where. Now, now, in this sea of glass was before the throne and before the holy place, just 
Now remember, the seven golden candlesticks sit here. Like this is coming a ladder, see? Now, that's one reflects the light from the holy place out to here. Now, you, see, you, know, you don't have to write this down unless you just want to, but that's, I've got something else here I draw it out myself that I wanted to get to you on. But now, you see, this was called the Sea of Brass. It wasn't quite that big. It was set over more or less position in the temple. It was set along about like this here. It was a sea of brass. It was a laver made out of brass where they washed the sacrifices. Before the sacrifices was burnt or accepted, they had to be washed. Oh, wouldn't that make a sermon right now? Oh, my Lord. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that just, it just strike me? Washed. Before any sacrifice is received to God, is first got to be washed. How? Not emotionally, but washed by the Word. Now we can go back and get word of this Jewish rabbi. When I was preaching on that sermon, of the waters of separation, the red heifer waters that kept up, that they were made of waters of separation. And before we can ever come to God with true faith, we first got to come by the waters of separation. Amen. Yes, sir. You've got to come by what? The Word. Oh, let me just see if I can talk this so you everyone will get it. Now put on your spiritual thinking. Take off the war bonnet and put on your spiritual thinking now because here comes something washed before it can be received at the altar. Must first be washed by the waters of separation. Now, turn with me right quick to Ephesians 5. Just hold your place and go back just a few pages back to Ephesians, the 5th chapter and the 26th verse. That He might sanctify and cleanse it, the church He's speaking of. See now, let me go back a little farther than that. Go back about the 21st verse while you're looking. S submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submit yourself. Congregation, submit yourself to your pastor. Pastor, submit yourself to your congregation. If a little click rises up, don't be on either side. Submit yourself to the whole congregation. Congregation, if you start in a click, submit yourself to your pastor. In the fear of God. See, oh, brother. Mm. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Because he is your Lord. How many knows that, you women? Exactly right. The Bible said so at the beginning. Still the same way. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. So as a husband, you know that you married people and adult or children so old enough to know the way of life. All right. As unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Amen. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen. Don't run over. If you do that, you're not fit to be a husband. That's right. That he might, listen, here it is. Get it now. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the Word. Mm. That every worshiper that ever gains access into this has to come by the Word. There's too many comes otherwise. I believe in little stories and things that 
but mother died long years ago. She's waiting for you in heaven. That does all right. After the word has been applied. Many people come to the altar because want to meet their mother. In heaven, that's all right. You should do that. But that's not the reason that you come to the altar. You come to the altar confessing your sins because Christ died in your stead. Amen. By the word, then any sacrifice does not come according to the word is unaccepted then. Is that right? Amen. Oh, brother, I hate Amen. to say this. Oh, I don't hate to say it. Forgive me for saying it. That's the reason Acts 19 stands in the Bible. Amen. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Amen. They said, we not worthy. He said, and how was you baptized? Why ain't you got in here? They come some other way besides the word. Right. Said, all oh, we went through the form of it, we was baptized. John, he said, that won't work. John only baptized unto repentance, not for remission of sins. Amen. And when they heard this, they were rebaptized. Why? By the word. Amen. Washed by the waters of the word. Amen. The word said the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that tacks anything else onto that is false. Now, my precious brother, I know this is a tape also. Now, don't get excited. Let me say this with godly love. The hours approach where I can't hold still on these things no more. It's too close yeah, to the coming. See? Trinitarianism is of the devil. I say that, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Look where it come from. It come from the Nicene Council. When the Catholic Church become in rulership. The word Trinity is not even mentioned in the entire book of the Bible. And as far as three gods, that's from hell. There's one God. It's exactly right. Now, do you say then you believe it all these people that as Trinitarians are of hell? No, sir. I believe they are Christians. But the hour is approaching, brother, where they are sincerely wrong. Yeah. Any man, anywhere, anytime that wants to talk on the subject, come to me. Any minister, bishop, archbishop, whatever you might be, and this is taped, go around the world, I ask in brotherly love for any person that hears me on this tape around the world that will come to me and show me one text of Scripture or one paragraph in any history that's authentic history where that any person was ever baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost until the organizing of the Catholic Church I'll change my doctrine. Thank you, Lord. Every person was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And my precious brethren, your eyes are blinded to those things. Pray God give you light. Now, if you've got Scripture to support it, I'll be looking for you. You're listening for your call. You're... You uh, beyond this tape, you're willfully walking in spiritual ignorance if you don't challenge me on that. Amen. You want to know what's light and what's dark? Let's ask God. Amen. Remember, I say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. Oh, blessed be. If you be me to be his servant, and if that wasn't according to the word, it would be wrong. Then if it is according to the word, it's your duty to come straighten me out. Amen. See what happens. It's an uh, error. I believe that many thousands of Trinitarian people who believe in three gods is saved. Because they don't know any difference. We're going to get to that on down in the message. Now don't you all stop your tape and walk out of the house, you Trinitarian brethren. Just listen to this. But you just sit still a few minutes. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to your congregation. Amen. Don't stop getting the tapes. Just stay with it. Search it by the Word and see if it's right. The Bible said, prove all things. I know it's unpopular. So was Jesus. So was the message always. 
You love me when I come to heal the sick and afflicted among you. You thought it was great. Great crowds that build up the church. Now Jesus did the same thing until one day he had to get down to truth. Amen. And when he did, even 70 turned away from him. Amen. And he turned to the rest of the 12 and said, Will you go also? And Peter said those notable words, Lord, who would we go to? Oh, For thou words alone are eternal. Amen. God's word alone is eternal. Amen. And find me anywhere that God ever had anybody baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You go to Matthew 28, 19. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Where Matthew said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And anybody that thinks the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is the name, it shows there's something wrong with their education. Amen. Now for a seventh grade student to say that to bishops that's listening to this. Yeah. Father's not a name. Son's no name and Holy Ghost is no name. There are titles that goes to the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember, that's not in anger. That's said in love and godly Amen. respects. Right. Amen. With love and consideration for the full body of Christ. To where I'm invited by my Trinitarian brethren and all over the world to come and preach in their congregation. But, I never mention it when I'm among you. I want to be, unless you ask me yourself, and I'll go over to the parish with you and talk with you about it. But before your congregation would stir them up, it's your place to get the revelation of your teacher. You're the shepherd of the flock. I'm speaking to ministers. If you don't understand, come, let's set the reason together. The Bible said, prove all things and hold fast to that what's good. Sea of glass where the sacrifice is washed and we are washed. Oh, don't forget that. We're coming back to it after a while. Washed by the water of the Word. Then you've got to hear the Word before you get out of there because only one way you can approach God, that's by faith. Is that right? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing of the Word. Washing our conscience. Not to meet a man, not to meet father, not to meet mother, not to meet baby. That's all true. We will do that. But the first thing we got to come is God's avenue of approach. Amen. We'll be washed. When we hear the Word of God, by faith we are walking. Amen. Grace, what God did for you. That's right, you believe God. You believe on God, and as soon as you're sorry, you're already forgiven. As I was speaking to a brother yesterday, kind of got a little mixed up on it. And I said, look, brother, if you said something to hurt your wife's feelings, immediately you feel sorry for it. You're sorry you did it. You're already repented in your heart. That's right. But you've got to go tell her about it. You've got to go say, Honey, I, I'm sorry I said that. Then you thoroughly repented. That's what it is with God. A man that would go and say, I hurt her feelings. Don't make any difference. I'll tell her I'm sorry, but I really am not. You're a hypocrite. See? That's right. That will never be received by God. You've got to thoroughly be sorry for your sins. Then when you know that you're sorry for your sins... And then repentance. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive forgiveness, receive the Holy Ghost. It's just simple. God's made it so simple. Here the, we notice share in the sea of glass it was likened unto crystal. Now the sea of glass is symboled, typed, by the brass sea. This is the glass sea in heaven. Moses saw it as a glass sea and made what was called the brass sea. A brazen altar. Brazen sacrifice. Brazen altar, rather. You know what brass speaks of in the Bible? Judgment. He made a brass serpent. What does a serpent mean? The symbol of serpent means sin already judged in the Garden of Eden. When thy heel shall bruise its head, his head shall bruise the heel. And brass represents divine judgment. The brass altar where the sacrifice is burnt, brazen laver where it was washed for the water of the word. See? Amen. Mo, uh, Elijah in his days went out and looked up and said, The sky looks like brass, divine judgment upon a rejected nation. Oh, my. Brass. Bra 
raisin. Now, we're at the laver. And you notice this laver was empty and was as clear as crystal. Why? The church had already been redeemed. Amen. Now, now we notice a little later on, oh, when the tribulation saints comes up, we find it again full of fire. Do you know what would you like to read that? Let's go over to Revelations now. Uh, 15th chapter, the second verse, and read where we see this brassy fire again. All right. And I saw another angel. I saw another sign in heaven, right? great and marvelous. Seven angels having seven last plagues, for in them is filled up with the wrath of God. Now the wrath of God, what? And I saw as it was a sea of glass mingled with fire. Now watch. And they that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over the mark and over the number of his name stood on the sea of glass having harps of God. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God. Oh, do you see it? Amen. Tribulation period. Oh. Are you in a hurry? No. All right. Listen. Let's notice something here. How do we come? We've got to come, this Gentile church, to this Word. Sea of glass, water, water of the Word. Is that right? Amen. Recognize the Word the way it's written. Amen. Then the sacrifice is received and filled with the Holy Ghost from the inside, shining through the light of that age. Uh, from this, here it comes out of the holy place in the air, out of the star in the air. Get it? Amen. Notice. Now, at the end of this age, John, when he saw the sea of brass, there it was clear as crystal. What was it? The Word had been taken from the earth, raptured in the church, and it was clear as crystal. No more blood. The church age was over. Now, in Revelation 15, the remnant of the woman's seed, which was the tribulation saints that went through the tribulation, was found, look, standing on this sea. Amen. And it was filled with fire, blood, red blazes, licking forth the fire of God. They had gotten the victory over the beast, Rome, over his number, over the letter of his name and over his image, the confederation of churches. And it come out. And through the preaching of Moses and Elijah, those two prophets that will appear to Israel to pull out the, this group of people, those tribulation period saints, back in that time that will be brought in. With, see, the church is done rapture now. But remember, the wife is on the throne the tribulation period lived in the kingdoms out and brought all their kings and their honor and glory into the city. As we get down into Revelation 22, you'll see it. If you're writing this out and holding it, when we get to it, you'll see what we mean. We haven't got time to just catch every little thing and write back and forth. But hit the high spots of it. Then someday, maybe the Lord willing, we'll have a lot of time to talk of it. Now, these tribulation period saints that come up and went through great tribulations, the church will not go through the tribulation. Amen. Do you see that's already in glory? Amen. And here's the tribulation saints, the sanctified ones that had been it's mine and your fault. They had never heard the word. If they heard it and rejected it, they went on to hell. Amen. It was cast out in the outer darkness because they rejected the word. But if they would never heard it, God's just. Amen. Tribulation period comes to them. Now notice, just a minute. Saints wash by the same word. Of course, it's the same altar. It's the same sea of glass. And the same word. Revelations 2, 5. Uh, Revelations 15, or rather, 2 to 5. No, notice, just a minute. Now, we never took the word to them. That's the reason they was, they was like that. We never took the word to them. We're going to be held responsible. 
So we'll not be able to catch all the peoples. The church won't in this age that's got the truth. Because they'll go through the tribulation. They're not the saints that died way back down in them church ages because he said they come up out of the great tribulation. And the great tribulation is yet future as the church goes home. Amen. Oh, there you are. Amen. Oh, I love it. Listen, let's go a little farther. I want to see what kind of word they heard. Now let's start again on the second verse of the 15th chapter. And I saw as it was a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name, stood on the sea of glass, having harps of God. Now see, they never entered in, but they heard the word. They had heard the word. Now listen. See what kind of doctrine they heard. See if it compares to the church now. And they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God. That's after Moses had crossed over. And the song of the Lamb. <laughs> saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Who is that Lamb? Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. See what they recognize him to be? Not the third person in the Trinity, but the Lord God Almighty, the King of saints. Listen, are you ready? Fourth verse. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord? Capital L-O-R-D, Elohim. And glorify... Who is it left that will not fear thee? And glorify thy name. It was washed by the same waters that you've been washed by now. Hearing the word and the faith and power of Jesus Christ being the Almighty. It's the whole revelation at the beginning, the whole thing wrapped up in the revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. God made flesh among us. Amen. Great and marvelous are thy name. Who will not fear and honor thy name? Thou art, for thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. In other words, we see what it means to not to receive it. Your judgment has been made manifest. So here we stand. We're washed now. We're being washed by the water as we come through the tribulation period. We took our stand for you and we believed you. And now we stand on the sea of glass and we're honoring and glorifying thee as a reflection of thy holy name. Amen. And our candles are true and our judgments is righteous. Oh my... We stay a week on that. <laughs> Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's draw something right here now. Just a minute. I've got something I want to draw. Now, let's always well, we take that right there where we are. Now, if we'll notice, there's a great picture. Now, here is the Holy of Holy. All right? Here is the Holy place. And here is the uh, first before coming there is the uh, the sea. All right. Now notice how do we approach God? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing, hearing the word of, God. word of God. That's being reflected from the holiest of holies into the messenger of the age back in and that. In Solomon's temple, it gives a reflection. Those candles reflected its lights out into that brass ladder. Yeah. So here, the angel of the church age is reflecting into that water Amen. who this guy is in here. Amen. Reflecting his mercy, his word, yeah. his judgment, his name. All is reflected in here where you're separated by believing it. Amen. You get it? Notice how beautiful this is here. We saw it the other day. Watch your here. Therefore be justified. Just 
justified by faith. All right? Second place, that should be more sanctified. And then filled with the Holy Ghost. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. You see it? How's his message? Justification by hearing. Sanctification is what you do. And in regards to what you did in appreciation that God seals you by the Holy Ghost. Now you, my Baptist brother, want to ask you something. You said, what more could Abraham do but believe God? And God imputed to him for righteousness. That's all he could do right here. He believed God. But God, to accept his belief, gave him the seal of circumcision. And sealed him, showing that God had accepted his faith. Amen. Amen. And if you profess faith in God, and has never been sealed by the Holy Ghost, Ephesians 4.30... If you want to put it down. Ephesians 4.30 Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby you are sealed. Amen. And you're not sealed until you have received the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. How long does it last? Till the next revival? Unto our redemption. Amen. Hallelujah. The very day of redemption. There's no way of getting away from it. You can't get away from it because it won't get away from you. Right. See? For you are sealed until the day of your redemption. Yes. There is nothing future, nothing present, perils, hunger, thirst, death, or nothing can separate us from the love of God Amen. in Christ. Amen. Thank you. Paul said, I'm Hallelujah. fully persuaded of that. Yes. <laughs> there you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you are. You're sealed until the day of your redemption. Notice, that will bring up to last, last Sunday again. Have I got time? I just what? What's this? The spirit, spirit, soul, and body. All right. See, body, soul, spirit. Now, let me erase that and fix something here for you. Now I'm going to draw something here. I uh, didn't get a chance to draw it last Sunday. So I've got to draw it out here myself on this piece of yellow paper I want to, so you can mark it down and you can see what I mean. Now, you and your pencils. Now, this is the body. And this is the soul. And this is the capital S-P-I-R-I-T, Spirit, Holy Spirit. All right. Now, that's what we're made up of. If you notice over here, Holy place. Holy of holy. Here, altar. Holy place. And here, the sea. The sea. That's where you hear the word. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing the word, separation. Sea of separation. Separation sea. Now, notice this. Now there's only one entrance to get into here, and that you have to come here first. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Now, I wish I had room. I'd put over here the, the virgins, one the, the wedding supper, another one. See how this man got in here at the wedding supper? And he come in some other way. Here was the door. Jesus said, I am the door. And this wedding table was sitting here, the people all sitting around. And here was one man up here that didn't have a wedding garment on. And when the king come in, he said, how'd you get here? My friend, how'd you ever get in here? It showed that he didn't come in with this door. He went in at a window, come in the back way, or through some creed or denomination. Amen. He didn't come with the door. Because in the old Orient, they still have the same thing. The bridegroom that's going to be married, he gives out the invitations and furnishes the robe to everybody he's invited. Amen. Oh, Amen. how my heart spins around and around when I think it. Amen. No man can come to me except my Father's giving me an invitation first. Amen. And all the Father has given me will come to me. Amen. Oh, amen. How was we called before the foundation of the world? Oh, oh, to put on the Lamb's book of life, to see the light, to receive the Holy Ghost, and walk in it. Amen. 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 Oh, Our name for the Lamb was slain was put on the book the same time the Lamb's name was put there. 
The Bible we get to today, Paul said, He deceived all upon the earth whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life since the foundation of the world. Notice, then if he, the bridegroom himself, when he stood at the door, the fellow brought the invitation up, said, Here it is. Thank you. He took the invitation, laid it down here, and put a robe on him so they'd all look alike. I like that. See? In the power of God in the church of the living God, the rich, poor, bond, free, black, white, brown, yellow, all look the same. For they're robed with the same power of the Holy Ghost. See? Now, it showed he didn't come to the door. Now, notice here. What if a man tried to go to the holies of holies, Somebody, some Bible teacher tell me if somebody started into this holy of holy without coming through here, he died. Aaron's son took strange fire one day. Some denominational fire. When it wasn't denominational fire. And they died at the door. Is that right? Or Eli's sons it was, I believe. Eli's sons took him in. When it represented the sons of Aaron, which was a priest. Now, now there's one way to get into the body. How's this body controlled? Now watch real close now. You get your pencils ready. Here's the gate on this side that goes into the body. One, two, three, four, five. Now you got that drawn? Now, the first gate over here is see, smell, hear, and taste, and touch, or feel, either one it wants to be, doesn't matter. Now that's the senses of the body. Is that right? How many knows that? Yeah. Six yeah. senses control the body. Now we got a soul as you get through this. The senses is outside. That's the outer system. Now in here there's one, two, three, four, five. Five attributes in the soul. Now you'll write them down. The first one is imagination. Imagination. The second one is conscience. And the third one is memory. And the fourth one is uh, reason. And the fifth one is affection. Now, did you get them all? If you don't, then let me know now. You got them all down? See, taste, Feel, smell, and hear. The body. That's open to the body. The soul is imagination, conscience, memory, reason, and affection. Is the senses or the attributes uh, like the senses of the soul, and the soul is the nature of the spirit that's on the inside. Because the soul only puts out an atmosphere of what's on the inside of you. It takes the place of sanctification. The soul is such in the same category there. All right. Now, every, everybody got them all down? All right. Now, to this gate, there's only one. One gate. That's called self-will. You're the boss of what goes in there. And what does it do? What is this? The body must be washed the latter, sanctified and uh, here, filled with the Holy Spirit here. And this becomes God's judgment seat again. Where God sets in your heart, and if you do something wrong, say, Ooh, my, I did wrong. Some people say, it don't condemn me to, to wear short hair to women. It don't condemn me to wear manicure or makeups or whatever it is. It don't condemn me to go to dances. It don't condemn me to tell a little white lie. It don't condemn me to play bridge at my bridge party. You know why? You ain't got nothing to condemn. That's right. That don't hurt my conscience. You got more conscience than a snake has hips. So you just you ain't got no conscience. There ain't nothing that'll hurt you. You're in the world. But I challenge you to let Jesus Christ come in here and try to do it one time. Amen. Brother, you'll be so condemned, you'll back off and shake your head from that thing as a certain as I'm standing here. Because he's holy. Listen, I'm quoting the scripture. If you love them things, that's the world. Things of the world. It's because the love of God's not even in you. How is self will? Why would you call that self will, Brother Branham? Because it puts a man and woman back again, just like Adam and Eve at the Garden of Eden, on 
What? The two trees? Self-will. This one is death. This one is life. Self-will. Immor- free moral agency. God placed the first man, Adam and Eve, right here on free moral agency. He places you the same place. And the only way that you can get this thing fixed in here is your own self-will. Hallelujah. Your self-will. You have to will to do God's will. You have to get away of your own will to let God's will come in. For this is the only channel that leads to the heart. Oh, you can join church, you Baptists and Presbyterians. And you Methodists and Pilgrim Oldest can come to sanctification. But you have to will to do God's will. Self-will to let the Holy Spirit come in here to bring forth these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay their hands on the sick or take up deadly things and so forth. These signs shall follow them that as that their will become my will. And the works that I do shall they do also. I hope you don't miss it. There's the will to do God's will. You see what I mean? Look here. Talking about the holy place, the laver. Here's the light, the candlesticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one of them's got a light. Where are they getting their light? Where's the light reflected? Where's it reflected to? It ain't reflected over here in the corner on some denomination. Is flipping back here to the Word. Swatters of separation. Amen. For repentance and remission of sins, Luke 24, 49, must be preached in His name to Amen. all nations beginning Amen. at Jerusalem. Amen. How was repentance and remission of sins taught at Jerusalem? How far is to go to all the world? Repent ye, said Peter in Acts 2.38, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. That Amen. message is to go to all the world. Amen. Then the end shall come. Then the end shall be after this message has gone to all the world. How oh, these candlesticks are reflecting light over here on some Methodist Presbyterian or Pentecostal denomination? Well, certainly not. It reflects in here. As the I am, not the I was. Now three or four different people, but God sitting in there, reflecting himself out to each one of those churches. Look back there and see what they did. We just come through history. They reflected him as he was. As he is and like he always will be. He that was. As soon as John got the first glimpse of it, he said, He that was, which is and shall come, the almighty God, the creation of God, Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end. That's the true life being reflected. Do you see it? Amen. Amen. After 12 o'clock, and I, I got... Listen. Let's just hurry so you can copy it down. I just hate to keep you too long, but I don't know when I'll see you again, see? Now, I want you to get this. Friends, this is life. Amen. Now, look. I don't mean because I'm standing here. If, I, if I'm reflecting that sort of... Then I'm... Re- you misunderstand my heart. I'm not trying to reflect, oh, this is just, uh, you're nothing. I'm not trying to do that. If you haven't received the light, I'm trying to point you to one here. Not to one here at this pulpit. The one there at that throne. And that throne wants to become in your heart, then you'll see exactly the same thing as it's reflected here. What is this up here? It's reflecting this. And this is this. The Word. Washed by the waters of the word, by the word, washed through the waters of separation from the things of the world, the world by the word. The word says he's the same yesterday and forever. Amen. You don't say he's the same in the Pentecostal age, back in the disciples, and then the next age he changed. No, he's the same. Amen. See? You can't make it say nothing else. We can just stay on one of those things for hours. But I hope that you're getting it now. God's called you. You'll get it. That's why I believe it. Amen. All right, sir. Now what is it? Justification, sanctification, baptism, the Holy Ghost, soul, body, spirit, all the same. Now, lights reflecting the Word, the true Word, reflects what? What would this lamp, if it was getting its reflection from this Shekinah glory? It would reflect Shekinah glory. Amen. Is that right? Amen. If you got in a seminary, your light, you reflect the seminary. 
You got in a Methodist seminary, you reflect Methodism. You reflect, if you got in a Pentecostal seminary, you reflect Pentecostalism. But if you got it in the glory of God, by the burning bush, why would Moses come out from his presence? He had to put something over his face so the people couldn't even look at him. Yes. Is Amen. that right? Amen. He was full of the power of God. Amen. Stephen's a man full of the Holy Ghost trying to stop him. Why, it's like trying to put out a house on a windy day in a fire. Uh, put the fire out of the, in the house on fire on a windy day. Well, the more they, the more they blowed it, the worse it got. Well, you couldn't stop him. Directly when they put him before the Sanhedrin, of course, the Bible said he stood there and looked like an angel. Uh, I don't think an angel just meant he was a certain being standing there, but an angel knows exactly what he's talking about. So does any angel, a messenger of the church age, don't have to go back and see what the seminary thinks. He knows what God said in his Bible, Amen. the power that's reflected it, to prove that he is the same as he is. He's not afraid. He's telling us exactly what he knows to be true. And God said it right there, backed it up with the same kind of signs and wonders. And with the same word. That's an angel. Stephen stood there, so I know what I'm talking about. That you stiff necked, uncircumcised in the heart and ears, you always receive, resist the Holy Ghost like your fathers did, so do you. So, which one of your fathers has and kill the prophets and build their tombs to them? You denominations. <laughs> which one of you hasn't done the same thing? Build big white walled uh, castles and margs and things around here and then talk about God? You're the very one that put him in the marg. You're the very one that put him in the tomb. That's the very thing you put him in the tomb back there. It was a big white castle church, the denomination. Pharisees and Sadducees. They put him in there! Amen. And then try to build a memorial to it. Let me tell you that Christ is a living being. Amen. He's not something that died. He's something that rose from the dead. Amen. And alive forevermore. Oh, brother. Sure. What does it do? It reflects what? It's reflecting from here. What would it be? It would re- what's the true reflection of him? Then the first thing it would reflect to be his name. Is that right? Amen. It would reflect his name. Next thing reflect to be his power. Do you know what I mean? It would reflect everything he is. So if this is reflecting to this age here everything that he was, then he is the same. What is it? It's reflecting him as he was, as he is, as he always will be, because it's coming straight from the throne of God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Same God, same power, same glory, same everything. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, brother. Let's get just a little bit farther. Now, let's take the rest of this sixth verse over here of the fourth chapter. I got some comments wrote down here on that and I want to hurry get to if I can. Now, the rest, if you leave this, cha- if you leave this verse, it just simply just rotates in what they did. Let's see if we can get to there. Glass, sea of glass. Now, we know what that was. And in the midst of the throne, four living creatures, a beast. Now, now, how many's got a revised version of the Bible? In your revised version, it says living creatures. Well, I wondered how that this King James here said uh, live, uh, was for beast. Well, I get me a Greek dictionary and go back in the Bible dictionary and find out what that meant. Now, here's what it is. I know it's close. The word translated here, now you mark it down so you can look it up too, to be sure. See, I want you to mark down what I say. And if you can or want to. All right, the revised version says living creatures. And, now, what? And uh, there were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And it goes ahead and describes the beast, which we'll get to it in a minute. Now, the beast here is represented. Have you got a marger reading in your Bible? Well, on, on beast, if you have, get over a marger reading. I know it's Dr. Schofield here uh, has it marked out in his. The beast means, you got over here, it says living creatures. Oh, my. Now watch. The Greek word there is Z-O-O-M. Or Z-O-O-N it is. Z-O-O-N. 
Now, uh, in, in the Greek, it's called Zoom, which means a preacher. Now, it isn't so, if you want to read it. Now, we haven't got time. I was going to read it, but I have Put down Revelations 11, 13, and 17. Now, there where beast is, the chapters in Revelations 11, 13, and 17 is called beast the same way. But the beast, our interpretation is T-H-E-R-I-O-N, theron. The word Greek word theron, which means a wild, untamed beast. Theron, that means a wild, untamed beast. But zoom means a creature. See? Four living zoom creatures. Not the beast of wild, Theron, but zoom, living creatures. And Theron is wild, untamed savages. In other words, if you'll watch the 11th chapter, the beast of Rome, the 13th chapter, the United States. The 17th chapter, both the United States and Rome. All the denominational churches consolidated with Catholicism makes them an unconverted, untamed to the gospel. Amen. Woo! Praise the Lord. Untamed! Bless God, we come from the big Methodist Church of Baptist and Presbyterian to Pentecostal denominations. We know what we're talking about. The lady's going to tell us. There you are. Untamed, unconverted. Amen. Without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent despisers of those that are good. Yeah. Having the forms of... Don't do that. Now, I just love to tear that thing to pieces right now, but I sort of get on this tape anyhow, but we haven't got time to do it. Now, you understand. How many understand? Say amen. amen. See, amen. these are... What is Zoon? Z-W-O-N? Living creatures. It might be pronounced Zon, Z O N. How would you pronounce that? Zoon? Zoon, I'd say. And Theron is T H E R I O N. Theron, see? So that means untamed beast. Wow! Savage! That's what then, beast, you take your, get your Greek dictionary and go right back and see if that ain't the same word. You look in there and see. Get your, get your Greek textbook. Get your amphetic uh, uh, dialogue. Uh, find out if that isn't true. That, that is true. That it means an untamed beast. In Revelations 11, 13, and, and 17, and here in Revelations 4, it means a living creature. Not a beast. But it's called beast. But it isn't. Same thing in Ezekiel 1. Nate, well, 1 to 28 it is. Maybe get to it in a minute. All right. Untamed. Unconverted. Wild beast. Untamed. But these are living creatures. What are they? They're not angels. I'll tell you why. Let's read Revelation 5 right across the page. Revelation 5 and um, 11th verse. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels, angels, plural, around about the throne and is a conjunction, and the beast and elders. See? And the conjunction. See? They were not angels, neither were they elders. They were living creatures Amen. at the Amen. throne. Oh, don't you love this? Uh, living creatures. They're not angels because this proves right here. See, I beheld and heard the voice of many angels around about the throne and the beast and the elders. Now, there's three different categories here. I hope you all got this system down here now. Now, I want to show you. There's three different categories of it. Three different species. Oh, uh, around the throne. Here's the throne. Now, the first at this throne is four living creatures. Outside of that is 24. Just like that. Elders sitting up on, the thro- up on their, their thrones. Little thrones under and around this is great host of angels. Around the throne. <laughs> See what I mean? They're everyone different one from the other. There is angels, here is elders, and here is living creatures. Amen. Let's not leave that for a minute. Let's just hold it there a minute. Living creatures. 
What are they? If they're not angels, they're not redeemed man. What are they? Would you like to know? Amen. Here's my interpretation. I hope it's right. I believe it is. They are God's guards of His throne. Amen. Now, we're going to read this a little bit. Now, you see, they're not angels or men. They're not wild beasts. They're creatures, living creatures. Now, here's the throne of God. And these are His guards. Let's read just a little bit and find out in a few minutes. See? There are God's angels, or God's guards of His throne, and they, let's get, just, just a minute again, let's get back to Ezekiel. I, I got these things wrote out here, and I just hate to pass them by and know that this is a... Let's get back to Ezekiel, the first chapter, and let's begin with the 12th to the 17th verse. Just a minute. And they went every one straight forward. Now we're going to look in a few minutes and remember the seventh verse here. Now look what they look like over here in the seventh verse of the same chapter of Revelation the fourth. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast was like a calf, the third beast was a face head of a man. And the four beasts were like flying eagles. The fourth beast like a flying eagle. Now, when Ezekiel saw the glory of God, he saw the same thing that John saw. Amen. You remember last Sunday how we got the glory of God and got the picture where he had it taken with us? You remember that? The glory of God, the same thing Ezekiel saw, the same thing John saw. Here it is today, makes Jesus Christ the same as Ezekiel's time, same time as here on earth, the same God that's here with us today. Same yesterday, today, and forever. He that was, which is, and shall come. The entrance to the soul, body, and spirit. Hallelujah. The brazen sea, the word, the sanctifier of our soul, and the filler with the Holy Ghost. The same thing, see? Just the same. Now watch this. All right. And the spirit, wherever they went now, to go, they went. And they turned not when they went. They couldn't turn. If it's going this way, it's going like a man. Going this way, it's going like an eagle. Going this way, it's going like an ox. Going this way, it's going like a lion. They couldn't go backward. They had to go forward everywhere they went. Each one of the beasts. Now, what does the beast mean in the Bible? Power. All right. means the power. Now, as for the likeness of the living creatures and their appearance was like burning coals of fire and the like of the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth light. That's God from the fire went light. There. Not cosmic light now, the eternal light. And the living creatures ran and turned. Uh, let's see, they... The living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels, their work was like unto color of beryl, and the four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was it was a wheel in the middle of a wheel. What's the symbol here, Brother Brandon? What is it? It means that these guards, these guards was God's ark. They were in journey, rolling on wheels when Ezekiel saw them. But when John saw them, they'd already come into their right position in heaven. The ark of God was on earth rolling on wheels. As they took it from place to place, meant it was in travel. They took it all the way up to the wilderness and all the way into the temple and so forth. But now it's received up because the church age is over and it's received up into glory. Amen. See? It's stationary now in heaven with all the angels and things around it. We find them after a while taking off their crowns and falling on their faces and giving glory to Him. <coughs> See? It was God's guards of the temple, of the ark. Now remember... God's guards of the ark are the mercy seat. Now, remember, the how many John saw? How many? Four. How many did, did uh, he see? He seen four too. Four living creatures. Now watch, you both seen the same vision. And four is the number of earth. Did you know that? 
How many knows now before you have to go into it, four is the earthly number? Sure. Like the four Hebrew, it's a earth, uh, it's a number of earth of deliverance. Deliverance. Now keep that in your mind. Deliverance, because we're going to strike it just a minute real hard. See? Deliverance. Now, there were three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, but the fourth one come, it was deliverance. Lazarus is in the grave three days, but when the fourth one come, Amen. he was delivered. <laughs> Four is God's number of deliverance, so it showed that these beings must have been something about the earth. I hope you're not too hungry now. I hope your spiritual appetite is a little, little above your natural now. Hmm? All right. Now notice... They had eyes in Ezekiel, in here, in front, and in back, and within. Let's, let's read that. Look here. See? You see in here, I believe they spoke in here, a beast, four faces like an e eagle, and wings full of eyes, without, within. Look here. And the four beasts, and each of them had six wings about him. And they flew, and so forth, and had eyes without, within, and behind. It spoke of their intelligence. They know what was, which is, and which shall come. Amen. For they was right at the seat. Amen. So close to they wasn't even human. <laughs> temple guards. Oh, not temple guards. The temple guards, 144,000. But this is the mercy seat guard. The throne guard. The throne right up next to God. Living creatures. Amen. Next thing to God. Standing there. Their intelligence. They know what was. Which is what shall come. They had eyes without. Show what they could see what was to come. Eyes within. Knows everything now. And eyes in the back which show what was. Which Amen. was, which is, which shall come. Reflecting through the church ages, he that was, which is, and shall come. Amen. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hold on now. We're going to drive that thing come through the blackboard in a few minutes. Watch Amen. it. Now just a minute. Reveals their intelligence. And it showed they know no they know all the future and the present and past and all about it. And they're they were tireless. They never grew tired. They couldn't be anything connected with a man. He grows tired. But they were tireless. They sang holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, holy, 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 all day and all night, through every age. Holy. Let's to go back just a minute. Let's go back. I got a scripture in my Isaiah 6 right quick. Watch, Isaiah saw the same thing, just exactly every vision of the Lord. That's what I say. If the visions we have today is not exactly Bible visions, then they're wrong. If they reflect her any revelation that shows God anything but what He always was, it's a wrong revelation. Amen. The whole church is built up on it. Matthew 17. Let's see, Isaiah, the sixth chapter. This young prophet had been leaning on the arms of the good king and he had bought him all kinds of nice clothes and he was a prophet and he got along all well. But one day the king died so he had to, he had to shift for himself. So he went down to the temple to pray because he began to get out from amongst where the king's place was there then the good, good old king was a good holy man but he got and seen how the people was living so he got on the temple now listen in the year that the king Uzziah died I saw also the Lord setting up on a throne high lifted up and his train filled the temple glory what's his train that is angels beings his train that followed him the train's what comes behind See? His train filled the temple, and above it stood the seraphim, and each of them had six wings. With twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of glory. And when the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Wow! Oh, that shows them visions are just exactly the same, each one of those men. Holy, holy, holy. They are tireless day and night. Holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. 
Let's go back just a minute now to be sure that we got these fellows right. The first time that these uh, guards was mentioned is in Genesis. Now remember, everything that we preach has got to come from Genesis to Revelation. And times won't be questioned, you come ask me. See? It must be the whole Bible. Not just part of it because God don't change. What He was in Genesis, He is today and He was in the Middle Age. He's always the same. See? Now, in Genesis, when these cherubims, that's how I come to find them. I had to go back to find out what there was at the beginning. Let's turn to Genesis 3, 24, just for a moment now. Genesis, the third chapter, and the 24th verse. You love it? Yeah. All right. Now, let's begin about 22nd verse. I, I just like this. This is something I just won't put in here, just a little extra, but it may do a whole lot of good someday. And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become one of us. Now, my loving and precious and darling sisters, let me place it like that. Do not think that I am throwing a reflect upon the, the loyalty and the gracious, precious jewel of womanhood. I'm trying to show here what a woman... Please, and you on tape, you women will be listening to this tape. I am not trying to scorn you. I'm only a servant of the Lord to bring light. The lowest and immoralest and most filthy thing on earth is a woman when she's bad. And the most precious jewel that there is to a man besides his salvation is a good woman. And I'm speaking to that low, immoral, degraded, and I'm going to show you right here while we had this. Might as well show you why. And, uh, if the Bible teaches for women not to be preachers, pastors, teachers, or anything else in church. <clears throat> now just listen to this. And the Lord said, Behold, the man is become one of us. Now he never said the woman has become one. The man has become one. And knows good and evil. The woman didn't. She was deceived. Do you see it? Now, Paul said, I suffer not a woman to teach her to usurp any authority. But for Adam was first formed, and then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. So she didn't become one of God. She didn't know no difference. She was deceived. You get it? If you do, say amen. So on. The Lord said, Behold, the man is become one of us. To know good and evil, and know, and now lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man. And he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flying sword, flaming sword, which turns every way. See the four beasts? There's only four ways you can go, see? <laughs> east, north, west, and south. These cherubims had a flaming sword at the gate of the garden to keep the way of the tree of life. Because if man ever got a hold of the tree of life, then he could live forever. And these children's first mention was placed at the east gate of the garden. Going four ways. I should have made that a little different from that. I can't do justly to God's orders and things like that, but uh, I just so that you don't know what I mean. There's the Garden of Eden. And this is the gate right here. It opens up here. Twain died. And at this gate, there was cherubins. Cherubins. If you remember, it doesn't say a cherubin. It said cherubins. Amen. Cherubins was placed there to guard what? The tree of life. That's what they was to guard the way of the tree of life. The way. Amen. Who is the way? Jesus. Amen. Where's the 
reflected from him. Amen. Here is the holy place. Here are the cherubim. Now watch. Put all this down. Here is the holy, holy, this holy is the holy. Holy of holies. This is the holy place. And here is the sea. And here is the light candles, the seven. That's to reflect the light from here. In here, in here, in here, in here, in here, in here. See? Amen. What are the reflect? They are guarding and reflecting with the fire of God the way to the tree of life. Amen. See, it can't come from over here, Presbyterian Seminary or Pentecostal Seminary. It's got to come from here, Amen. reflecting the light. All right. You notice these, these cherubim that John saw here must have been interested in keeping the tree of life, so they must be interested in human beings. A regenesis, getting back to Genesis again. They kept the tree of life, guarded it, the way of life, the way of life. How is the way? Jesus said, I am that way. I am that bread that come from God out of heaven. If a man eats this bread, he'll live forever. Now there is a way back to that tree of life. You get it? Now, at this I want to show, now I'm making sure it's an altar. Now, this must have been an altar at the Garden of Eden. I'll tell you why. Do you remember? Both Cain and Abel come up here to worship. So that shows that God's altar was moved and set here at the Garden of Eden and the only way back to Eden is by the altar. Here you are, again. See? Back to Eden, through the altar. And they were to keep that way there, guarded, that they couldn't get back there until this altar was covered with blood. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, can't people see it? See? Nothing but the blood. There has to be an atonement, a mercy seat there. This altar of judgment must become a mercy seat. And when this altar is the blood is lifted, there will stand on that judgment day the fire of God's wrath to guard that tree again. Only one thing will enter into this gate to eat again will be through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. You see it? Amen. Now, notice. Yeah, now Cain. Well, here's Cain and here's Abel. Uh, Abel. Alright? Now, both boys come up to this gate to worship. Is that right? Amen. So it must have been God's altar. Yeah. Is that right? And before this altar... They built substitutionary another altar. Here's the true altar of God is in the heart of man. Then there's another altar down here which is representing the holiest of holies in the holy place. <laughs> oh, I feel like speaking with tongues. Oh my! The glory of can't you see it's perfect? Amen. Just notice. Oh, the reason I said that because I can't find enough words in my own English dialect to express my feelings. Amen. See, something has to express like Brother Roll, a diplomat, the president, uh, about uh, four or five different presidents. He said, oh, Brother Branham, one night I come to the meeting. He said, I didn't know what to do. He said, I stood out there and he said, oh, said, I've loved the Lord all my life. He said, I've been, a, I think, an Episcopalian. He said, I thought I know the Lord. He said, and one night I looked around, I didn't know what to do. He said, I, I wouldn't go in for nothing. But said, I heard the word coming forth. Oh, it began to come. He said, I began to walk up and down on the outside of the tent, walking back and forth. And said, directly, I couldn't wait to get to the door. I crawled under. When the altar call was made and run to the altar and fell down and said, Lord, I am a sinner. And said, then he filled me with his Holy Spirit and said, I can speak eight different languages because he's a diplomat. See, he is a, he's an, a, he's a, a diplomat, the, the president, and all the way from Woodrow Wilson down. He's a diplomat to every one of our presidents, foreign diplomat, can speak any foreign language. He said, I practically know ever known written language in the world. But said, I was so full of glory, I couldn't lose, use any of them to praise him, so Lord, give me a brand new one out of heaven to praise him with. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, Amen. There you are. Guarding this gate. Cain and Abel come up here to worship. So it must have been an altar that they guard. Is that right? These cherubim? Another thing. Notice here's another evidence. Cain. Watch the Bible now. I'll have you turn to it.
to it, but it, never mind. You get it, Genesis. All right, right. Cain went out. Cain went out from the presence of the Lord from the gate at the garden. Amen. So the presence of the Lord must have been at the altar and the altar was at the gate. Amen. Glory. Amen. Oh. All right. It's God's dwelling place at His altar. Now, Cain went out to the presence of the Lord from this place. You want to put it down? Genesis 4, 16. If you want to put it down. Now, now you got all that, have you? Wrote down? Now I've got something else I want to draw here. Just a minute. Amen. I just hope none of your beans scorches or anything. Now, notice. Let it scorch. That's all right. They'll perish anyhow. Let's, let's think of here. This is the this is thing. It's, it's real. Moses was taken up into heaven. Moses taken from the earth up into heaven and saw the order of God. Is that right? I'm trying to prove my point here. You know what I'm trying to do, don't you? All right. He went up in the presence of God and when he descended from the presence of God, he said, God told Moses, make everything on earth as patterned after heaven. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Ah. Then when he did, when he made the ark of the covenant, he put two cherubims to guard the ark. Amen. See what it is? It was the temple, it was the altar, the throne guard. The two cherubims, he said, mold them out of brass and put their wings a touching like this because that's exactly what he saw in heaven. That's exactly what John saw in heaven. These four cherubims on the four sides of the ark of the throne of heaven. Amen. They were the guards of the ark. Cherubims, guards at the mercy seat. If you want to read that scripture, we ain't got time to go to it. Put it on Exodus 25, 10 to 22. Now, they guard the mercy seat when God is in His Shekinah glory. Where was the Shekinah glory? At the mercy seat. Amen. Is that right? They guard that Shekinah glory. Mm -hmm. Listen, friends. Then it goes to show that every scallywag can't come there and take of that. Amen. You've got to be prepared before you come into the presence of it. Look at Aaron and Tite. Before, now remember, the congregation in them days couldn't even approach it in no manner. But when Aaron went in, how many times did he get to go into it? Once a year. Once a year. How did he had to have on certain clothes was made with certain hands. Yeah. A peculiar type of clothes. He had to be dressed in such a way he had a pomegranate and a bell that every time he walked, it played holy, holy, holy Amen. unto the Lord. He was approaching the mercy seat with the blood. Amen. And he had to be anointed with a certain oil, perfume with a certain perfume, made out of the rose of Sharon. Amen. And Jesus was that Amen. rose of Sharon. Amen. I noticed... A rose is a beautiful thing. It has perfume in it. But before the perfume can come out, the rose has to be crushed. And then the perfume is squeezed from the rose. Jesus in His life was the most beautiful life ever lived. But He couldn't remain that way because He had to anoint His church to approach His holiness. So His life was squeezed out and the same Holy Ghost is up on Him is put up on the church. Amen. And he makes him the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The rose of Sharon, the perfume thereof. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the person that's approaching into this holy of holies has to be anointed with the same Holy Spirit. And as he walks, holy, 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 unto, not with a cigar in his mouth, holy, not with his color turned around, holy, Amen. holy, holy, Amen. dressed in the holiness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm. How wonderful thou art. Ah. Now, the mercy seat. Now, the mercy seat's in the heart. Seat where the shining forth of his, his glory in all of his children, the Shekinah glory in the human heart. Here's the human heart. Is that right? Is that the mercy seat? 
How do you come to it into that through these different systems? Through self will. Self will. Comes into here and through there comes out what? Shekinah glory. What God is the Shekinah glory? Is God's presence. Amen. And when a man's walking or a woman, he's reflecting the Shekinah glory. You don't go into gambling dens and, and carry on and go out here and deny the word. No matter what the people says, he's got his heart set on one thing. God. And if he's truly called of God, then Jesus Christ reflects himself to him with the Shekinah glory. Doing the same things he did back there. Manifesting the same gospel. Preaching the same word. Same word being made manifest in the same measure it was then. Just like it was truly at Pentecost, it's measured back again. Oh my. Mercy seat. Ezekiel and John both seen the same things. Now notice. Now we're just about to come to the end. Just a little bit. Now here's where I want you to get something old. Please don't miss it. Now how many knows that those turbans were living creatures and not beasts? They were the, a higher order. Now is an angel a higher order than a man or a lower order? All right, sir. Which is the greatest, the Son of God or an angel? Son of God. Son of God. Which would God hear the best? An angel stand there before him pleading for something or one of you all pleading? One of you all. See? Because you're sons and daughters. They're, they're servants. See? They're servants and you're sons and daughters. So see what authority you have for this afraid to use it. Now, I want you to notice here, this is beautiful. Oh, now let me go over here and skip some of this so I can get down to this. Get your pencils. Now here's what I really wanted you to draw in. <coughs> Maybe I'd better make that a little smaller. Now, Israel in their journey, when they camp, now, watch this close. They camp one, two, three, four. Oh, wait a moment. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's the way they camped around the mercy seat. I know all you know that you watch the read the Old Testament. Now, on the east side, the east side, right here. I'll put it down so you'll be sure to get it. East. The east side was always Judah. This is the gate. J U D A. Judah. And with Judah was the head of three tribes with their banner. Three tribes with their banner, the banner of Judah. You remember how many seen the Ten Commandments? Uh we'll see some real Ten Commandments, all right? You read right here in the scripture, in the scripture there, brother. That was Judah on the east side. All right? On the west side down here, I put down you read last one, Exodus and so forth as you come out, was Ephraim. E P H and he had three tribes with their banner. All right? Ephraim. Now, and on the south side was uh, Reuben. R U B with three tribes and their banner. And on the north side was Dan. Dan with three tribes and three uh, tribes and their banner. All right? Now that's the way they came. Now remember, let's read now in the scripture now so we get this just exactly right. I'll begin back at the seventh verse. And the beast was likened unto a lion, and the second likened unto a calf or a young ox, and the third beast was like the face of a man, and the four beast was and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts each had of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and shall come. And when these beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns, cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, power, for thou hast 
created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created. Now, I want on the east side, east side, he saw what kind of a face. If you notice, it was a lion. L I O N. That was the banner. That was a that was the standard banner of Judah because he is Jesus come out of the truth, and he is the line of the tribe of Judah. Now, how many ever seen the zodiac? Many of you know what it is the star. See, that was God's first Bible. Now, what does it start off at the first number in the zodiac? The first figure is the virgin. Is that right? And what's the last one? Leo the line. The first coming and the second coming of Christ. All through there, they get the cross cancer, uh, cross ages, just the voice cross fishes, which is a cancer age. And we live right through it. Notice in the pyramid when he built it in the time of Enoch, every stone was in there. They can measure them things just as that can tell the wars and things. Everything is complete but the headstone. Why? You know what's on your dollar bill? Take it out. Look, the cap's off of it. Why? It never was capped. Christ is a headstone. That was rejected. He was a rejected headstone. He's coming back pretty soon. Amen. Watch how that church, way back here in the Lutheran age, way wide at the bottom, then become minority. A little bit more minority. A little bit more until it comes right down after it leads the Pentecostal age and comes right down to every stone to fit right in to put that cap in there. A church that will bring Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just Amen. Perfect as it can be. Now, he was the line of the tribe of Judah. Now, anybody that's ever read the Bible know what Dan... Number was over there, what Dan, oh, I mean, what, uh, yeah, what Dan was, is, is an eagle, that's right. He was an eagle. Somebody should read the Bible. He was an eagle. Now, the Reuben was the man. He was the first one. The weakest one of the bunch. Didn't they, Jacob, say so in Genesis 49? Reuben, thou art the first of my strength, but like water. You went up on my couch and defiled my couch and live with your father's concubines, see? That's the immorals of a, the human being, see? The animal don't have that immoral. The lion, none of these things have that, but the man does. Run with the next man's wife and so forth. Just like, just the same man. Everything's complete. Now, this down here, this Dan was an eagle, and this uh, Reuben was the man's face, and Ephraim is the ox. Now, you get the picture there? Ephraim, that's the way they came in the Bible. Now, if you notice, Dan is the head of three tribes. Judah is the head of three tribes. Reuben is the head of three tribes. And Ephraim is the head of three tribes. Three fours is twelve. Twelve tribes of Israel. See? Each one with their banner. And the banner of Judah was a lion. The banner of Reuben, man. The banner of Ephraim, an ox. The banner of... Uh, of, of Dan was an eagle. Now look back here what John said. And one had the face. Let's read here now. You'll see if it isn't the same thing was like in heaven. The first beast was like a lion, Judah. The second beast was like a calf. That's a young ox. Uh, the third beast was the face of a man. And the fourth beast was a flying eagle. Just exactly the tribes of Israel camped around, guarding their earthly guards of the right to the ark. Oh, hallelujah. Don't you see it? <coughs> Here. Mercy. M-E-R-C-Y-S-E-A-D. Mercy seat. Nothing to come anywhere around it without crossing those tribes. Crossing what? The line. Amen. Crossing the man, the intelligence of the man. Amen. And crossing the workhorse as an ox. Crossing the eagle of swiftness of it. See? The heaven, the earth, in between, and all around. Oh, see, they were guarded. And above it was a pillar of fire. Brother, nothing touched that mercy seat Amen. without the approach. And the only thing that could approach it was through the blood. Amen. Aaron went in there once a year with the blood. Now you see it? I want each head of three tribes guarding the mercy seat, the mercy seat of the Old Testament. Now, have you got that down? Everybody? Now, here's a brand new one, brother. Listen to this. Then we'll know. I remember that was the guards of the 
Old Testament. How many's ever read it in the Bible? You know, that's right. See? Yeah. That's the guards of the Old Testament. Now, we're living in another age. Amen. Glory. Amen. <laughs> oh, I love this age, don't you? Amen. Now, God has a mercy seat today to be guarded. Amen. You believe that? Amen. Where's the mercy seat found? In the heart of man. Where did it come in the heart of man? At the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost, which is God, come into the human heart. Is that right? Amen. Now let's mark this down here. You get ready to draw it if you want to. Pentecost. P E N T. But Pentecost is the mercy seat, the Holy Ghost. Put in here, I tell you what, make it more appropriate. Let's put in here the dove, which means the verb. All right? Guarding the mercy seat. Now, has God got guards for the mercy seat today? Uh, I watch how beautifully it's drawn out. I sat the other day and saw this, and I just jumped up and ran around and around and around the chair saying, Glory, 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 glory. Right. Round around. Charlie, I, of course, do up in the woods sometimes. <laughs> Sister Nelly, if I act like that, you run me out of your house. <laughs> oh, I just had a glorious time. Now, watch what it was, what the Lord did. Now, Pentecost, after Pentecost, wrote a book of what? Acts of the Holy Ghost. A C T S. Is that right? Yeah. What does the act start off with the first thing to enter into salvation? Acts 2 38. Is that right? They was all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with their tongues and Peter stood and preached them a sermon. They said, what can we do? How are we going to get into that? He said, Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now remember, God's got some guards for that, for that mercy seat. What is that mercy seat guard? All right? M-A-T-H, Matthew, on the east. Luke, Luke, Mark, John, all of their four Gospels vindicate the book of Acts to come. Amen. They guard it anywhere you want to look at it. Let's just take one. Just one. We ain't got time. I got 20 of you row down here. But let's just take one on this subject for salvation. Now we're going to have time to pray. Oh, it's one o'clock. So I guess we won't have time. Unless you all want to pray for sick. Now, I guess I've got plenty of yeah, all, all right. Now, notice this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What is it? Earthly number. Amen. Of the Gospels. Four. All right. Notice. Now, Matthew 28, 19. 28. Now, that's where your Trinitarian brother is going. 28, 19. All right. Matthew, the last part of the chapter, said, Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. But here it comes around Pentecost, and Peter said, Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus. Amen. Something's wrong there. Amen. Matthew, are you that eastern gate guard? How is the gate? The gate is what? Jesus. Amen. Jesus says, Straight is the gate. Is that right? Amen. Is it spelled? How is it spelled? S C R A I T or S C R A I G H T? S-E-R-A-I-T means water. Amen. Water is the gate. How do you come in? Repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Unlocks the gates. Amen. 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 Oh, but Brother Branham, you got Matthew 28, 19 down there. That's exactly right. But Matthew, are you a guard to it? Sure. Amen. I'm the full guard. Now I get Matthew 1, 18 to see what it says. See if it guard, guards this. See if Matthew 1.18 is guarding Matthew 1.28 and Acts 2.38. Yeah. Amen. See if it guards it. <laughs> now the birth of Jesus Christ is on this side. Here's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, he tried to say. The birth of Jesus Christ is on this side when his mother Mary was expelled. Joseph before they came to us. She is now with the child of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Which one? That's part of both one. And this is all done there. And behold what? Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willingly to make her public example, on his mind, put away on this wife. Behold the angel of the Lord. 
The sin didn't come upon him, you know, and said, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not taking thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. Is all done that might be fulfilled with prophet which a virgin shall conceive. I, uh, Isaiah 9, 6. A virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Amen. Does he guard him? <laughs> Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Just this. Titles. Amen. That one name. Amen. So the guard stands right there to back it up. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. You get it? Amen. Oh, my. Now, how many knows that? There it is. He's the guard. Now, that's just a, I've got a whole bunch of other for salvation to take these others. But now, if we're going to have a prayer line just in a minute, for just about ten minutes, let's try something else here just a minute. Let's take some scriptures now. Hold on right now. Here they are. All right. Now, let's take and see if Matthew up here now will guard it for divine healing. Got your pencils and things out? You're writing this down? All right. See if Matthew divides, uh, divide, uh, will guard it. Let's take Matthew 10 and 1. Let's take and see if uh, John, just one or two. Let's take two or one or two or each one. John 14, 12 and 15, 7. See if they're guarding divine healing around the throne of God. Mark 16. Mark 11, 21 and 22. Luke 10, 10 and uh, 1 to 12. And Luke 11, 29 to 31. Let's run a few of them. See if they guard. See if they guard the rights of divine healing. The same as they guard the gate for Jesus' name's baptism. We can take it through each one of them. Amen. That's right. Amen. Now, let's just go back and see Matthew 10, 1. Just turn back now. So we, then we're going to close just in about another 5, 10 minutes at the most. The Lord willing. All right, let's get Matthew 10. See if Matthew guards the acts of the apostles. Did you think that if God go put a guard around His Word? Amen. See if that ox, lion, Man, eagle, is it still set to those gates right here on earth right now? There's the Gospels, the four Gospels. See, and you notice every way they went, they went straight forward. They don't contradict one another, they stay with one another. <laughs> one goes with the shrewdness of a man, the other goes with the swiftness of an eagle, the other is a pastor, yeah, one's a banish, it's a fly, <laughs> like a man to see, the other is a pastor, the other is sturdy, the other is shrewd. See, guarded on every side. God garden this Holy Ghost gospel. Amen. Believe it, brother. Amen. All right. Now, let's take Matthew 10, 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power. Mm. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. Amen. Baptized with the Holy Ghost, and power for service came. What he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, just pacify the baby just a minute now. Just a... Listen close. I gave them power against unclean spirits. Many pastors just let the unclean spirits stay right in his church. Women dress, act, card parties, bunco games, dances, soup suppers, they're all mercy. Against unclean spirits. To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. See that guard sitting at the gate? Amen. The gospel guard to back up that book of Acts that was wrote. Now I heard a great teacher not long ago said, the one, a great man, fine man, met him and shook his hand, a fine brother. He said, but the Acts of the Apostles is just a framework for the church. <laughs> In other words, he had the framework out here. See? When the Acts of the Apostles is inside, and these Gospels are the framework to hold it together and protect it. Amen. 
see how the, <laughs> the mind of a man can do anything? I'd thought the same thing if it wasn't for him. See? The framework, Pentecost was the framework of the gospel. The four gospels are the framework to back Pentecost. Amen. After they had this framework up, Pentecost to come into existence. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Which was wrote first, the book of Acts or the, or the apostles? The apostles. Jesus walked wrong doing works and predicting what would come. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, them four guards coming right and everything that seemed to come to pass, telling it just like this, how it was going to happen, what was going to take place. Then all at once they framed it around and here it comes. Amen. 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 Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the framework or the guard work that protects the main temple, Amen. the throne. The Pentecostal blessing, not Pentecostal denomination, brother, sister, they're far back outside the whole thing. Amen. Farther back than any other churches. Amen. They're farther away than Lutherans was. Lutheran did keep a little better than they did. That's right. More like it. That's exactly right, Gene. Because I didn't see Jesus on the outside of the Lutheran church trying to get in, but I was trying because I think he never was in the first place. But he, he was in the Pentecostal church and was put out. Amen. That's right. Now, Matthew 10, 1. Now let's go over here to John fourteen twelve and see if, if if John's going to back up and guard the precious things of Pentecost and um, John fourteenth chapter and the twelfth verse. Jesus speaking, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, cause I go to my father. Amen. Oh, brother, that gate there with the eagle was set right there, cause that's the evangelistic service, you know, flying like an eagle. Swiftness go plumb up into the prophetic land up there, you see, and foresee things and tell things that was, which is, and shall come. See, sitting right there, Gordon, and said, the works that I do, watch that eagle. See, here's the line, the sturdy. Jesus gave them power, and he protects it. He protects Acts 2.38. He backs her right up there, that line. Here comes that swiftness of the gospel and this eagle. Saying, these works that I do shall you do also. More than this shall you do. Fly across the world with it. <laughs> like the dove that had the mate's head pulled off and poured around the blood, sprinkled the ground, crying, holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. Clean the leper. Yeah, now I've got another one there, John uh, 15, 7. Let's turn right over to the 15th chapter of Sever. If ye abide in me, now, and my words, not the seminary's words, my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Is that right? Then the gospel's guarded right here. This Pentecostal blessing is guarded by John and his gospel. It's guarded by Matthew. His gospel. Now, let's go down to the next gospel. Mark, 16th chapter. See if Mark guarded this Pentecostal blessing. Mark, the 16th chapter. Now, let's begin here about the... It talks about the resurrection. Now, let's go on down to... We hit about the, the 14th verse of Mark 16. After he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. They didn't believe the ones who tried to tell them the message. See, that's the way it is today. Amen. The people's got a witness of the Holy Ghost. The people's a nonsense. They're a bunch of holy rollers. And he upbraided them Amen. for the hardness of their heart see? and their unbelief that had known him in his resurrection. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What? Preach these. This, there's only one gospel for guards. Amen. Preach this gospel to every creature. Now remember, he's taking in both all four guards: Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. See? Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. See, enter this baptism here. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Oh, brother, believe, please. And, conjunction to tie the rest of the sentences together, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, now let's see. What does the Methodist say? If you can shout, live a good life. The Baptist says, just have faith and be baptized. The Episcopalians say, stand like an Episcopalian like that and bow when the chanting's being done. The Catholic says, say I'm a Hail Mary. The Pentecostal says, join our denomination, be baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There you go. See? These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Mm. 
No Father, Son, Holy Ghost about that. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. Amen. Oh, brother. Now, get right back to the 11th and then we're just about ready to close. Matthew 11 and I got uh, 20 and 21. Jesus speaking. All these are Jesus speaking now. Not a one of them, but what Jesus is speaking. Every one. And on the morrow, when they came near Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree, that's when he cursed the tree. That's Matthew 21. I got 12. Me. Uh, Mark 11, 21 and 22. And Peter calling to remember, said to him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed in the way. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Have faith in God. See? For verily I say unto you, then it's on the inside, say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he can have, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Amen. For the south gate's guarded by the ox. Amen. The north gate's guarded by the lion. The north gate, I mean the east gate, and the north gate is guarded by the flying eagle. John, the evangelist. Then, the physician on this side, Luke. The man. Now let's see what Luke says. Take Luke, the first chapter, I believe we got Luke 10 and uh, 1 to 12. It's a, it's a commission, you all know what it is, but Luke, uh, the 10th chapter, and 1 to 12. All right, we could go right ahead and read it all, but we won't have time to do that. Go your ways, I start the third verse. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither person or script. See, don't go in some name of a denomination. You go as I send you. See, don't go with a, a, a assurance that you're going to get $100,000 for this revival. If you don't, don't go. You see, set up your campaigns. He said, go where I'm sending. See, yeah. carry neither person or script nor shoes. Salute no man by the way. Don't stop by and say, I'll go over and see how the, these are going along, how these go right on where I send you. Pay no attention to nobody else. And to whatsoever house you enter, say, peace be unto this house. If the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall return, shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. And in the same hour, remain in the same house, rather, remain eating and drinking such things as they give. Now, all this stuff about not eating meat and so on forth, my goodness. See? For the labor is worthy of his heart. Go not from house to house. Go with the Joneses the day to dinner. Go with the, the next the pair the next day and the next pair the next day. Stay right there. That's when I go into a meeting. You know why I stay right in the hotel and stay right there? That's exactly where I find peace. Don't go from house to house. And to whatsoever city you shall enter, there, when they receive you, eat such things as set before you. And heal the sick. Heal the sick that are therein and say unto them, The kingdom is God is come nigh unto you. But now let me read the next verse. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your way out of the city in the same day, even the very dust of the city, which cleaves on, on us, we, let's see now, even the, and even the very dust of your city, which cleaves on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be you sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say to you that it shall be more tolerable in the day of judgment for Sodom and for that city. Amen. Oh, brother, with that blessed assurance. Hallelujah. If they don't see, receive you, go ahead. Just say, well, if you don't want me, I'll just wipe the dust off and off my shoes and go right on out. In other words, say, I never tuck nothing. If I eat anything, I'll pay you for it. And let's go on. He said, Very, and every one of those cities that they went to and was not received, every one of them is sunk and gone today. And every city, city that received them is standing to this day. There you are. Now, one more. And then closing. Let's see, we got 10. 11, 29 to 31. Luke 11, 29 to 31. Then we'll be closing. Oh, I love this. And when the people... Had gathered, let's see if I got, is that Luke? 
Luke 11, 29. Yes, I guess this would be it. Yep. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, This is an evil generation that seeketh a sign, and there shall be no sign given it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was a sign unto Nineveh, so also the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. When she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold her greater than Solomon is here, the man of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. What am I saying now? Closing, I just have to let the rest of it go. But in closing, I want to say this because it kept me so long. What's he saying here? There will come a day that a wicked in a generation of adulterous, now remember, will seek a sign. And this is a wicked and an adulterous generation. And he said that generation will receive a sign. Watch out, Bible vines of the rest of the Bible. The sign of Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and nights. So must the Son of Man be in the belly of the whale. There are three days and nights. What will it be? The sign of the resurrection. See? The sign of the resurrection will be done in a wicked and adulterous generation. And it was done in the book of the Acts. Jesus raised from the dead, come into Peter, James, and John, and the apostles, and they did this book of the Acts. It wasn't the Acts of the apostles. It was the Acts of the Holy Ghost working Amen. in the apostles. Amen. It's not a man today. It's the Holy Ghost working through a man, or man see, that does the work. It's not the man. The man's just a vessel. See? But the Holy Ghost is the oil that's in that vessel. See? And look what they did. Look at the signs that they've done of Jesus. They had to take notice to him because they, they, they were ignorant, unlearned, Peter and John. But they had to take notice to him. They had been with Jesus. They'd done the things that he did. So you see, every book in the Bible... Every, the four books, the four Gospels, guard the Pentecostal blessing with every scripture to back up exactly what they said. And now the Acts of the Apostles vindicate today with the four Gospels that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, Amen. today, and forever. Hallelujah. Do you love Him? Amen. They were gathered in that upper room all praying in His name. Baptized with the Holy Ghost and power for service came. What he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. <clears throat> Let me sing it. They were gathered in the upper room, all praying in his name. Baptized with the Holy Ghost and power for service came. That's what we need today. What he did for them that day, he'll do for you the same. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. These people may not learn to be, not just like Peter, James, and John, or boast of worldly fame. They have all received their Pentecost, baptized in Jesus' name, and are telling now both far and wide, His power is yet the same. This Amen. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. I'm one of them. Oh, I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, come, my brethren, seek this blessing that will cleanse your heart from sin. That will start the joy bells ringing and will keep your soul on flame. Oh, it's burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to His name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. One of them. I am glad that I can say I'm one of them. Hallelujah. One of them. I'm one of them. I'm so glad that I can 
say I'm one of them. It deceives a lot of them. People are, many people out here in the street that goes to church, belongs to churches, they're deceived. Like Eve was at the beginning. They don't know no different. Oh, come take the tree of life. Now, instead of the cherubims, and I want to say something, instead of those cherubims, a garden is thrown. They're out here seeking, trying to run people, guard them to the throne, trying to bring them through the gate back to the tree of life again. They might take their... Jesus said, I am the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I'll raise him up at the last day. That's right. Oh, I'm so glad. How many sick is in the room? Let's see your hands. Raise up your hands. All right. How many's got... Is that, did, did I understand, Billy? Where's he at? Did he give out prayer cards? Did he? All right, who's got... Now look this way, y'all. Now that's just like it is when he comes on the glory here, see? They, they come, it's a light where you're, you're moving here, you see? Now look, it's just, it's just a reflection. Just a reflection, that is. See, it's not the light. Here's the light hanging right here. See? Right here's this woman. I just happened to catch it and I thought it was over somebody. Now you're seeing one, I'm seeing two. One of them is the natural and the other is the supernatural. There's a man sitting on the outside here on the list line looking over towards that light. Struck him. He's from Seymour, Indiana and he's got, I had a stroke. If you'll believe, sir, God will heal you of that stroke. <laughs> Amen. Believe now. You believe with all your heart? Then if the Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, well, let me do something to prove to you that it is God. Then you'll believe with all your heart. Your, your condition is a nervous condition caused by a, uh, a menopause. You believe that God will heal you? You're not from here either. What your trouble is and doing so that He would make you well? I said make you well because it's not you that's going to be made well. It's your son. <laughs> He's in Virginia. Yeah. Do you believe that I can tell you what's wrong with him? By the help of God, he's got ulcers. He's right. And there's another thing wrong with him. He's unsaved. Yeah. And you're praying for him. Now, Mrs. Baker, you return back to Somerset and believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ will make him well. Archery, make you well. Accept him as your healer. If you could as a healer, Paul said one time, this audience of people who's listening and tuning the way up here in the day, Lord. Now, Lord God, I pray that your mercies and goodness will rest upon them. Satan, I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of these people. They're staying to listen to the gospel. You can hold them no more. Let the power of the devil that's bound these people leave.